Hey, my microphone working? Looks like it is. Hello, 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 everybody. It's your friendly local Zipperworks, and I am here with more Trails in the Sky the Third. I have absolutely no idea where we left off, so I haven't really opened my guide to the right spot yet, but we'll figure that out soon. That music is still so good. All right. Okay, what to load, please? I left off in the Hermit's Garden, which tells me absolutely nothing! No, my party's good. I just don't remember where I left off. You husband for the prime. All right. All right. 
Back to the plane. That's my next goal. Um, we have agate now. Which, unfortunately, means we can do things. Um. But I don't want to. <laughs> um. So I think I'm just gonna go to the fourth plane and head to the lodge. Anything else I can catch up with later. Sorry, I'm just popping back over here. Did that. I did that. Pretty sure we did that. Um. We'll finish up this chapter, and then we'll do the awful second part of Tita's thing I don't want to do. <clears throat> Hold on. The light wasn't on when we were last here. It's dark outside now, too. Yeah, it's night here now, just like how the time of day changed on the second plane. And I'd wager the time of day isn't the only thing that's changed here. Let's see if we can find anything else. Got it. That's what I was talking about. Nothing of interest here. Somebody was enjoying a nice meal. Let's go upstairs. Over there. Oh, shiny new thing. That must be the warp to the next plane. Still, it's hard to believe this is the same spot where we saw that beautiful scenery earlier. I don't think we can accept this being the real Lilacola after seeing it like this. You think we should proceed onward? I'd say so. I might as well get a look at what we're going to be facing on the next. <laughs> and not before we deal with this first. It's another of the 77 devils. Our gatekeeper of Gehenna feared for its dark incantations of frightful magic. The start of the abyss. Huh? Huh? Is this Whiteson's evil eye? It's gotta be from the uh, curse that was based on one more powerful version of Bind Space itself. Damn it, I can't move a muscle. Out of this, we're finished. Be gone, foul blasphemous beast. Reese, my goodness, I was worried it might not make it in time. Leave the devil to me, I'll take care of it in no time. One girl versus devil. Who will win? Probably the girl. Wow. <laughs> She's certainly not letting the brows put her name down. Don't push your luck, Reese. You know as well as I do that's not an opponent you can take out on your own. I know, but I'm a squire of the Grouse Ritter. I have to at least try. I've got a lot of things that I want to say to you. But right now, what I want to do most of all is protect you. Just like you and Rufina protected me. Hold on. Oh. Ow. Ah! Reese! She flipped over. No! <laughs> Come 
Kevin can now use the Ashcraft Spear on Floa. <laughs> I sure wasn't expecting to end up having to use this in here. This is just a formality for a worthless devil like you. That I hereby acknowledge you as a heretic to be hunted. Your chances to repent or beg for the goddess's forgiveness have long passed. May a thousand thorns adorn your flesh with sorrow. Become dust and vanish into the void of ignorance. I don't even have enough <laughs> CP for the Ascraft, so time to die, I guess. In fact, nobody has enough CP, so, um... We're gonna cry and attack the helpers now. Can I get two of you at once? Yes! Bowie, my beloved! Seems unfortunate. Oh, no, we're still good. Just minus any AP. Jesus H. Well, alright then. Couldn't tell you why it didn't take any damage, but I mean, I. Right. I don't like this. I aggressively do not like- Oh, goodbye, Olivier! But hey, we have an S break now. see that one rendered in 3D. Unfortunately, Falcom forgot Kevin existed after this game. Do you have any revive spells? Nope. Item time. should probably heal Kevin. That would be smart. Oh, none EP. Beautiful. No CP. Also beautiful. Also non EP. Ow. It moved right outside of the line of it.
any Heliards? No. Olivia, at least. There we go. That was a bit annoying. That's that. Let's move out. Wow, that is a lot of um, whatever the gold one is. I think it's space. This gave us something to justify the trouble. <laughs> well done, Kevin Graham. Not sure who this is. I'm guessing the Lord of Phantasma? Yes! Ha! Good guess. You again. Your next destination is the Path of Beasts. Devour the new offering presented to you and display your seal once more. Then should the flames of Gehenna burn ever fiercer and my kingdom draw closer to its true completion. <laughs> You didn't perform as well as I hoped, but my words still came true, did they not? Just who are you? It's about time you took that lame-looking mask off and showed us your face, don't you? If that is what you wish, I would be more than happy to oblige. But ask yourself this. Is that truly what you desire? What? You have but to say the word and the deed shall be done. Well, what's it to be? Do you wish to see my face? I... I... Kevin? That's enough, Lord of Phantasma! Stop trying to mess with Kevin's head with your cryptic nonsense! <laughs> I am doing no such thing. He doesn't understand my words. That is because he chooses not to by himself. Regardless, time has come for the child and the son to return to you. And with that, you will finally have sufficient pieces for me to prepare some more advanced game boards for you. No! <laughs> Your next destination is the path of the Dream Devils. Cross between the realms of shadow and light, and gather the black and white pieces therein. Only upon the completion of your collection will your path to yet a new game lore be completed. Kevin, I... I know you've got a lot of what you want to talk about, but let's save that until later, okay? Oh. After all, it sounds like this contains the girl we've all been waiting for. Everything else can wait until after she's out of the stone. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> Indeed. Thank goodness we found her. You're feeling kind of bewildered right now. Not every day you find yourself in a situation like this. You can say that again. I missed you, Estelle. <laughs> Same here. You guys miss me? I've missed you! <laughs> I'm feeling all emotional all of a sudden. There's so many faces I haven't seen in ages here. I'm not sure where to start. And if you have done a total 180 since I've last seen them, too. I mean, wow, Olivier, you look all princely all of a sudden. What did you cut your hair, Cheryl? 
Is that a new outfit? It's so daring. <laughs> I've taken quite a liking to it myself. I have to say, I still prefer that old white coat. I feel much more at home in it than this. Everyone else is same old, same old, though. Well, sorry for not breaking the bank on some new get-up for you to gawk at. <laughs> These clothes are practically my work uniform at this point. It'd take a lot to get me to change them. Oh man, it's so good to see you again. You don't look like you've changed at all. You're still a total airhead from where I'm standing. Annalise, you're here too? And as for you, Joseph, you've been calling me a damn airhead. In case you're raised in a barn, that's not a very nice way to greet someone. What? I was only telling the truth. Sounds like you're always a huge pain in the butt for poor Joshua. Okay, I'll give you some times, but always... Actually, you know what? Scratch that. It's none of your business. Well, though, even the captain and the major are here. It's lovely to see you too, still. Been quite some time. Man, this is the best reunion party ever! <laughs> don't forget about me, too. Come in! I don't recognize the person with you, though. Um, hi! Hello, uh, I'm Ray Sergeant, a squire, a squire of the Grouser. Kevin's told me quite a lot about you. He has, huh? <laughs> it's nice to meet you. You really are a special girl, so... Just having you here brightens up the room. You really think so? Hey, you're, you're okay. You look a little pale. What? <laughs> Sorry, Reese. Gonna have to take a rain check in our talk. Kevin handed the cube to Reese. Oh no! <laughs> what are you? I'll leave things to you. Kevin? K Kevin? Just because of that thing he did. What thing? What's going on? Kevin, wake up. Kevin! Whoa! That's bad! Time to save. Oh boy, achievement unlocked. Look at me, Kevin Graham. Structure... Solomon? You look as though you haven't eaten in days. Although by the sounds of it, you really haven't, nor have you been drinking anything. I saddened to hear the news about Rafina as well. But unfortunate accidents are a fact of life, especially in our line of work. It's a risk we all choose to shoulder when we depart on a mission. Excuse me? I've got no reason to be a knight anymore. I've got no reason to even live anymore. And if someone has to kill me, I couldn't ask for anyone better than you. I doubt I'd even have the time to feel pain before you were done, so... If that is your wish... In what world did you think I would happily oblige such an asinine request? I do remember what you said when you first became a squire, hmm? You said you offered your soul to the goddess above and your body and blood to her church here on Earth. After swearing that, you think you have the right to beg for death, much less a painless one? Don't make me laugh. <laughs> Still, I was reluctant to even relay this information for you. After seeing how pathetic a state you're in, perhaps it won't be so difficult after all. Squire of the Grouserder, Kevin Graham. From this day on, you are to assume the position of Fifth Dominion. Your appointment was decided by the Congregation of the Sacraments, and even His Holiness the Pope has given his approval. The job is yours. I imagine you must have at least heard rumors that the position of Fifth Dominion is vacant. That's been for several decades, too. Congratulations. Turns out that position was meant for you. <laughs> How the hell did that baby squire I once helped teach reach the same rank as me? I'm sure the Fifth Merkabel will be pleased to finally see the light of day. Oh, and incidentally, it's tradition to take on a title if you're choosing after becoming a Dominion. You might want to start giving some thought to what you want sooner rather than later. As you already know, mine is Carnelia, simple a name as it is. I don't care about titles. I don't care about any of those things. Why? Why me? I couldn't even protect Rafina. Why me? And to that I say, that is of no consequence here. What is of consequence is that Rafina Argent was a highly capable knight. She may not have manifested a stigma of her own, but her problem-solving abilities were at times greater than even the Dominion's. 
Her loss will be keenly felt. And it'll be up to our new fifth dominion to fill it. The words of his eminence, the cardinal. <laughs> oh, this is rich. This is just rich. Funny, it hurts. I become a knight to protect Rufina in the end. I jump shooting out the top of the ranks of her dead body. <laughs> Amazing, huh? Who could have seen that coming? I wish I could have gone back in time to tell myself what I signed up for, just what was gonna happen, just to see my own face. <laughs> so, what will you do? I should make it clear that you do have the right to refuse your new appointment. Admittedly, no one in the Grail's or just thousand year history has turned on the Dominion positions, and doing so would be unprecedented. But still. <laughs> well, no shit. No, I humbly accept my new position. I'm ready to start work as soon as it's there for me. No, start piling it on me today. I'm up for it. Alright then. Let's see what I can do. Oh, and don't hold back on me either. Throw me the really hard stuff, the kind you need to be a masochist to want to take on. And the title thing? Hmm. Let's go with Heretic Hunter, okay? That sounds just perfect. Kevin is not okay. And incidentally, we don't have him for this chapter. Whoops! Oh, so that's what happened. The more I hear, the more off the wall everything happening here sounds. I'm not surprised. We're making progress on working out what's going on, thankfully. Well, you know the place we're in is called Phantasma, and about how it has its own unique rules that govern it. I also know that all of us were chosen based on some criteria and then drawn into it. We used to have plenty of questions that need answering, but they can largely be summed up by the following three. One, who are the Lord of Phantasma and Schwarzritter? Two, what is the cube and the identity of the ghost who appears to be connected to it? Three, what is Phantasma, and how did it come to exist? That's a pretty succinct way of putting it. There are other questions, of course, but it's true that most of those generally fall into those three in some way. Why are there fiends roaming around comes under number three, for example. Lighting everything up like that does make it all a heck of a lot easier to understand, yeah. Oh, but wait, where does Kevin falling unconscious come into all of this? You mean to tell like the cause of that was him fighting some giant devil? It certainly seems that way. More specifically, the power he used to break the barrier that surrounded us must have been the cause. The one that made that red symbol show up on his back. I haven't got any idea what it was either. It's possible it may be some form of thaumaturgy passed down through the church, but I can hardly be sure. Joshua? Do you think you know what it could have been? I think I do. I can't be sure, but I think it was a stigma. <laughs> Seriously? Isn't that the thing that appeared on your shoulder? Yeah. Was. And you saw it was a physical manifestation of an image Wiseman had placed deep within my mind in order to control me. Kevin's is likely the same, save the control factor. However, I have a feeling his is also significantly more powerful than mine was. Well spotted, Joshua. Reese. Say, uh, how's Kevin doing? His condition seems to have marginally improved. But what he did resulted in a heavy burden being placed on his mind, so I think it would be best for him to rest for a while longer. That's a relief. <sighs> he sure knows how to give people a fright. Do you mind if I get clarification on something, Reese? Was my theory correct? Yes, it was. He did indeed use the power of his stigma. However, the key difference between his and yours is that his is one of the original kind, on which yours was likely based. Steel carved into a person's very soul is a demand infest only in the dominions of the Grousewitter. What's a Dominion? I've heard rumors of their existence, personally. The Dominions are a group of twelve knights who lead the Grosswitter. They're supposed to possess incredible power. That's also correct. Their stigmas are the source of that power. They allow the people who possess them to strengthen their body beyond what most would think humanly possible. And as well as use high-level thaumaturgy far exceeding the capabilities of other knights. So I'm sure you piece together, Kevin is one of them. Specifically, the Fifth Dominion. Are we even talking about the same Kevin who's been leading us around here? It sure doesn't feel like it! Sorry, but I'm a bit confused. Did Kevin have his stigma implanted within him like Joshua did? No. Ordinarily, stigmas aren't carved in that manner. They appear on their own without human intervention. 
There are 12 dominions, and that number has always been consistent throughout history. There are times that spots are left unfilled because a stigma barrier to fill them has yet to appear. They're always out there, whether the stigma is manifested or not. That's so weird, don't you think? So does that mean the stigma Joshua had... Mine was only a replica of the real thing. Weissman was originally a clergyman, so he probably had access to a way to make such a thing. Oh, yeah, I forgot he said that. He used to be a bishop in the Congregation for the Sacraments, which is the organization that the Grouser answers to. Even back in those days, he was in contact with Ouroboros and stealing numerous sacraments from the church. Things that were stolen included a vast amount of literature and research of the stigmas of the Dominions. And I believe he then went out to use that material as a basis to realize his dream of creating some sort of superhuman over the society. I thought so. Mm. Still, well, I think I have a vague understanding of just what these stigmas are now. I'm still not clear how using that power led Kevin to collapse. Does that risk naturally come with the use of your stigmas power, or is there something more to it? Oh, I don't know exactly why, but Kevin very rarely uses the power of his stigma at all. I've heard that the only time he relies on it is when disposing of those he brands heretics. In other words, those whose sins are too great for them to ever be able to walk the path of righteousness ever again. Disposing of? That's so ominous. So let me make sure I got this straight. He uses superpower he barely uses out of nowhere, and that caused him to black out because his body was ready for it. That's what I believe is likely the case. I see. I think I understand well enough now. Are you sure it's fine for you to be telling us this? Yes. I am almost positive Kevin was planning on telling you himself before he fell unconscious. And I believe telling you all this is necessary in order to ensure your cooperation in the rest of our investigation. Well, if you're sure... Wait, does that mean... If no one has any objections, I'd like to take Kevin's place and lead till he wakes up again. Is that alright with everyone? No problems here. Are you sure you don't want us to hear them? I would have thought you'd want to stay and look after him. Before he collapsed, Kevin entrusted me with a cube. As such, I believe this is my duty as a squire in his service. So please, don't worry about me. Right now, I'd much rather be helping all of you. Well, if you're sure. I personally see no reason to say no. The remaining members will be sure to look after Kevin. You won't have to worry about a thing, okay? Thank you. I appreciate that. What's wrong, Soap? Well, so, Reese, I've got a favor I want to ask, if you don't mind. Would you mind when I came if I came with you when you went head out to explore? Mm -hmm. Is there any specific reason? And so? Well, it's just, I've only just returned to the world of the living, right? I feel like I want to go and see what's going on for myself. And I mean, I am a bracer, so I doubt I'll get in your way or anything. So, would you mind? Not in the least. I'd love it if you accompanied me. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry for up and deciding that on my own, Joshua. Sorry? For what? It's, that's what you want to do, then you won't hear any complaints from me. I'll be counting on you to do a good job back in Reset. You know it! Alright! Time to fill this slot up with hoops. I'm Let's thinking Joshua and Chloe. Right. Oh wait, no, I need to get Agate. Hang on. Let's do it. I need Agate and Tita right oh, now, actually. Okay. So that I can go and do a thing, because it's time to go suffer. We're gonna be doing some doors now. And I'm gonna save. Save game for Mother. Bring to me the girl skilled in orbital engineering, accompanied by an ever-burning flame. Only then shall the door open.
can't believe I'm going through this. I should have never given in to pressure and promised to come here once a month in the first place. I need to adjust my schedule all the time just so I can come all this way to eat. It's such a pain in the ass. But, well, whatever. I do owe her, I guess. What the hell? I just felt this horrible chill run down my spine. What was that for? Ugh. Hmm? Okay, then. Doesn't seem like I've caught a cold or anything. Probably no big deal. Oh, well, that's everything Switch needs to be. Machine guns are new models, so they could probably do some tweaking. That's all the time and strengthened. This mobility is up 16% because of all the work we did through the night, you know. <laughs> okay, I think we should leave it like this for now and start and take some data as it's before we start doing anything else. Thanks for me. Ordinarily, we just settle for testing whatever they can perform basic actions at this stage on call it a day. I saw the Tita's helps ended up relatively complete for a prototype. I could probably get away with doing a simple combat test using it even. And we should too! After all, it just so happens that we have the perfect guinea pig for it coming. Morning, Tita. You sleep well? Yeah, I'm feeling great. Uh, um... All I can picture in my mind is the sight of that red-haired hooligan crawling on the ground after getting a beating of a lifetime for the horrible care. I can hardly wait to see it in real life, too. Um, I keep trying to tell you that it's really not a bad person. <laughs> Don't take what she's saying to heart, Tita. She could probably stand to discuss the issue a bit more tactfully. And I'm sure all she wants is to find out exactly what Agat's doing to try to worm his way to you in the first place. Seems to happen long. Okay, let me explain this one more time. He might be sort of rude and blunt, but then he does grumble every time he has to do something, and he has a bad habit of scaring people off easily. But he's actually a real kind, good person, I swear! Really, now? I'm starting to get a little worried about him, too. What? Why? Keep saying he's a really nice person? Alright, time to go and get things ready. I'll leave the final adjustments to you down. I've got something to take care of elsewhere. You're going, then? But I am. I've heard more than enough. Something has to be done. The sinner must be punished with death. What? Mom, where are you going? Babe! Yeah! Mom! What in Adios' name is happening here? Are you alright? I'll live. What was Erica in such a hurry for? <laughs> well, it's time for the testing to begin. You're not much less of an overprotective parent than she is, I'll have you know. Yeah, overprotective, but you fucked off for like a whole year? That's. That's great. Shouldn't have arrived so early. Might as well drop by the guild and see if there's any work to do till evening. What? Hmm? Was that just my imagination? The second I walked in the door, I felt like my life was in mortal danger. The only person here is a researcher there, so I must have been. My, 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 what have we here? If it isn't Agate Krosner! <laughs> I pity you, I really do. Come again? I never dreamed my target would come wandering in nonchalantly while I was making the necessary preparations for his execution! But that makes things easier for me. Now I can tell you what I want directly! We've prepared a most perfect place to die for you over at the Central Factory. So come along, there's not a moment to waste! Who are you? You here to pick a fight with me or something? Not at all. This is a completely legitimate request I made to the guild. Or more specifically, to you. Like hell you did. No request like that would ever get accepted here. You gotta submit a request to the guild. You're gonna have to come up with something a little better than that. 
Oh, you pitiable flea. I figured you were a little thick-headed, but I didn't think your general IQ would be quite this low. You need to be more aware of your sins. What does this woman have against me? Why is she scaring the shit out of me? Clean out those ears of yours and listen well, moron. This request is about testing the capabilities of the orbital gear by comparing it to you in a variety of situations, which means that by helping us, we'll be able to improve it. <laughs> and in the process, maybe the unforgivable sins you committed shall be. <laughs> Just what are you rambling on about, woman? Maybe I need to get the memo that the Bracer Guild exists to help people who really need it. They don't exist just to do any old thing someone feels like asking us to do. So I really haven't got time to be messing around with some crazy time waster? <laughs> Is that the real reason you don't want to do this? Or are you just scared? Say that again. I can't find her anywhere in Town Hall and she hasn't gone home. Just where could Mama run off to? It's not my fault you're not listening to me. As I said, if you'll help with these tests, I might even be gracious enough to re consider reducing your punishment a little. That sounded like Mom. Could she be in the guild? No one held that bunch. Theta? Hi, kid. What are you doing with Mom? Oh, and one more thing I want to make very clear off the bat. You do not get it within a cell, one cell day radius of my sugar powder donut under any circumstances! Are we clear, you shameless hoodlum? Wait a sec. Whoosh! Zoom! What the hell? What just happened there? Just up and ran off with Tita. I hope I didn't just witness her getting abducted by someone dangerous. You don't need to worry about that. Ah, what's up, Kilika? Her name is Erica Russell. She's Tita's mother. Her mother? That is Tita's mother? You've gotta be kidding me! Her parents came back here from abroad about two weeks ago now. Erica and Dan Russell. Their arrival was somewhat unconventional, admittedly, but they really are Tita's parents, I can assure you of that. You're trying to tell me that woman is related to her by blood? And with that mystery solved, would you mind if we got right to discussing work matters? Oh, yeah, lay it on me. I'm free until this evening, so if you've got any quick jobs that need doing, I can knock them out for you. Well, first, this is one from the Central Factory. They're requesting assistance with a variety of tests for a prototype of a new weapon called the Orbal Gear. Orbal Gear. Hold up a minute, that sounds familiar. The Guild has officially accepted the request that Erica mentioned to you earlier. It has her name on it, in fact. <sighs> I can't believe this. She actually submitted that as an official request. I don't know much more about the Zorbal Gear than you do, I'm afraid. She merely described it as a weapon that combines the finest in the world's oral technology. It's being developed by the entire Russell family together to boot. The location you'll need to go is Zeiss Central Factory. A new weapon. Wait a sec, you said the whole Russell family, right? Not just the adults? Please tell me Tita isn't involved in this crap. I couldn't tell you. She didn't say. I heard Tita was about ready to graduate from being an apprentice and become a full-fledged engineer, though, so perhaps she is. Would her involvement be a problem to you, Erica? Well, no, but I've never met her parents. I've only heard about them from Tita, so it's not like we could pretend to know what they're like. And her mom's nothing like she made her sound, and she seems kinda messed up in the head. And that kooks to Tita involved in developing some kind of new weapon. Put that request on hold for now, Kilika. On hold? Don't give it to anyone else for now, I assume you mean? Yeah. I'm gonna go and find out what's going on. Don't even think of giving that to anyone else before I'm back. Hooray! Playable. I feel like the floors three and four are pretty.
You know, here's some apples. That's not what we need. Huh. I didn't know that area existed. Neat. find them anywhere. Hey there. It must be Agate. Who's this guy? Doesn't seem like any ordinary engineer. Ah, oh, I get it now. You're Dan, right? I seem to remember hearing you were a bracer at one point. Oh, huh. it was a Cassius who told you. Oh, no. I just heard some stuff about you from Tita and her grandpa. <laughs> right. He actually quit the whole bracer thing about ten years back, didn't he? Thanks to right around when Cassius joined. I can't imagine him being much of a lunatic, but who knows? You guys developing a new weapon, right? I heard you got Tita helping you out with it. Is that true? Oh. Yeah. She is not just a simple assistant, however. She's a formal member of its development team. Tita's become so much more capable over these past few couple of years. I don't even feel like there's all that much I can teach to her anymore. That's right. What the hell have you guys got your own kid doing? Are you busy and that you can't afford to be back home here that often? And I know the little squirt loves herbal tech, so part of me gets why you'd want her to help with whatever new stuff you got in the works. But that doesn't make it okay to let someone that young work on developing a new weapon. Use some common goddamn sense, man! <laughs> it's so funny! Okay, do you... Do you trust her? What's trust got to do with this? Now go trying to change the subject on me. What you've got her doing? I've heard a lot about you since coming back here. And that, there's just one question I want to hear the answer for, to from you directly. That's my understanding that you've been keeping her company quite often when my wife and I were away. Is it because you feel she's unreliable? Maybe it's just a coincidence, or is there some other reason? Just what have you been trying to achieve by being with her so much? What? I wasn't trying to achieve anything. I guess if I had to give it an answer... There's no denying how much she's helped me. I'll admit, at the start, she seemed like she could do jack all, and I stuck around to protect her, but she never actually needed it. She's ended up doing way more for me than I ever did for her in the end. So yeah, I guess when I put it that way, I do trust her. Her daughter's pretty damn amazing. Let's see. Okay, so he doesn't seem to have as many screws left as, as his wife. I'll probably give him a pass, right? Look, I'm guessing there's some special reason Tita ended up involved in that weapon- developing that weapon of yours, right? You mind telling me what it is? Yeah, there is. Well, I suppose it couldn't hurt to tell you. You're familiar with Ren from Ouroboros, right? Yeah. The crazy strong little girl with a huge robot. Couldn't forget her if I tried. Tita told us she's friends with that girl. Which sounds insane, I know. Nah, it's not. She doesn't talk about it, but I know she is. Feels like she's going to unnatural lengths to avoid the issue even coming up, too. That makes explaining this a little simpler. The Orbital Gear Project was to have begun with the aim of developing a new kind of weapon that could compete with the society's advanced military technology. Eventually, we hope to end up with something that can even go head-to-head -head with Potter Modder. As soon as she heard about what we were planning to do, Tita told us she wanted to be a part of it, of her own volition. At first, Erica and I were strongly opposed to the idea. It was Tita who insisted she wanted to do whatever she could to keep the connection she had with Ren, she wouldn't take no for an answer. She insisted this was something she could do for her. From my perspective, her intention isn't actually to talk Ren down or anything along those lines. She just thinks that by participating in the Orbital Gear's development, she'll be able to keep thinking about her. The project connects them in a tiny way, even if they can't meet, and even if Tita can't do anything more substantial for her. It really is a tiny connection, and yet that's probably the best she can do for Ren right now, and she's determined to do it. She... I had no idea. You're such an idiot. How am I supposed to know your shoulder and something that heavy if you don't tell me? She's working on the project formally as an engineer, no different to Erica or me. My wife was the one who gave her permission. After she had as much resolve as she did, it wouldn't have been fair of us to treat her like a child. So you treat her like a child when it comes to her friendships! Okay! You mind if I ask something? Where is that little gear thing now? Does that mean you're up for the job? Well, I can't walk the hell away. She might go doing something crazy again if I leave her alone. I see. <laughs> Albert was right about you, Agate. You do seem to have some promise. But what are you talking about? What Gramps say? You'll need this, incidentally. 
Agate received an identification card from Dan. Using this in the elevator will let you get to basement uh, to the fifth floor of the basement of the building where the test will take place. Tita and Erica should be there. You're gonna want to make sure you're ready if you do go, though. Erica's been dead set on testing you. I couldn't care less what she wants. I'm just gonna go help Tita with the tests. If anyone else does, none of my business. What about you, Dan? You ain't coming? Don't mind me. I'll be there. And just so we're clear, I haven't decided to accept you myself yet. Accept me as what? I guess this is the place. Wait, is that it? One more time, too. Got nothing to do till mom and dad come back, so I should make the most of it. I thought it was gonna be a normal cannon. Can't believe you're making a robot as nuts as this. <laughs> what are you doing here? Is it because of mom? Did she ask you to come here? I'm so sorry. Mom and dad seem to have got you all wrong. I kept trying to explain to them that you really like, but they never listened to me. It's not a big deal. I ain't here because your mom asked me to come anyway. You're not? I... Well, I heard you were working pretty hard down here, like as a proper engineer. So I figured I'd come and join you as my way of showing my support, I guess. Open with these tests is an official request anyway, so it works out. Well, <laughs> okay, let me give you a brief rundown of the orbital here then. The prototype's most distinguishing characteristic is that the pilot can climb inside and operate it directly from within. I have not decided for sure the final model will necessarily be like this, though. Oh, and then there's how it features its maximum mobility. Come over here for a minute. Sh sure. We designed a new walking system to increase its mobility substantially, you see. Ordinarily, bipedal robots require two units that control their posture and center of gravity, which work in tandem with one another to walk. And this approach really drains system resources across the whole archaism. The way we've chosen to resolve this is... Decided to assist with the test, have you, Agate Krosner? You're so sweet. Does that mean you finally accepted your sins and have come to repent? I have no freaking clue what you're talking about. You're trying to get close to Tina, thinking I wasn't here, weren't you? Admit your sins and repent! I finally have first hand evidence! I'm crying out loud when you quit with the eyes, it's giving me the creeps. He might be completely useless when it comes to technology, but he's got potential, don't you think? He might just be right. I have to admit, there were concerns. I can appreciate that he at least tries to follow subjects he doesn't understand instead of outright refusing to listen to them. What are you two doing up there? Especially you, Dan. You were just up on the roof with me a minute ago. I did tell you I was going to watch the test, didn't I? Oh, here I am. Hi, Louie. Why are we yelling? I can't work out any of thinking anymore than I can his wife. Don't you dare ignore me, Agate Krosner! Well, regardless, that's everyone gathered now. I suppose it's time for us to begin. Mm -hmm. uh, what are we doing? I've finished all the necessary final chats. Good girl, Tita. Let the testing begin. <laughs> 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 what is wrong with this family? Well, Tita, do you think you'll be able to operate it all right? I'll be fine. I've had plenty of practice. Ready to go as soon as everyone else is. Beginning monitoring. No problems in the data link. Looks like we're good to go. Okay, Agnip. We're now going to begin testing on the Oracle Gear version uh, 0 0.5. Sure you're ready for this? Yeah, I am. Not come this far. I'm not going to turn tail now. I want you to promise me one thing before you begin, though. The final test will be a mock battle between yourself and the Oracle Gear. If you cause Tina to have so much as the tiniest scratch on her... I'll be sending you up to the goddess personally. <laughs> I wouldn't go quite that far, but you get the idea. Don't hurt her, all right? I know, I know. I ain't gonna hold back, but I ain't gonna hurt her either. That's all I wanted to hear. Okay, for starters... Dad went around again and began attaching small cords to various points on his body. What are you doing? 
Uh, so we can collect the data from your body in real time during the testing process. The prototype's mobility should be about equal to your own, if not a little above what you're capable of. So this should be the perfect way to test what you can really do. If that's your reason. Are you sure this isn't some form of harassment? <laughs> of course not. Right. Erica, if you would. Gladly! here? That's Erica's success dance. She always does it before every big test or experiment. Sha! Already I'm ready! Tap tap tap! Tap tap tap! Set up complete! I can't believe he still do that after all this time. It's not like it actually has any practical effect either. You look at all the data from the test she's done collectively, there's no difference in the odds of success whether she does it or not. Yeah, let me take care of that. Fire! Ah! As you can see, it's best to leave her alone when she gets all fired up like this. I'm feeling exhausted already, and we haven't even started yet. First test is a simple race. You're going to be doing three laps of the course, and the first to the finish line wins. There are obstacles in the way, too, just so you know. Be careful of those. You ready, Agate? Ready as ever, be. Let's get this started. I'm here for work, not to play. <laughs> so you are. I'll take your positions. Ready? Go! <laughs> what just happened? It flew! I'm sorry, Agate. My mom told me I had to finish the race by jumping over the finish line all of a sudden. <laughs> I should have. I do, it sounded like jumping was against the rules of the race, and we wanted to collect the data from it too. So you've only got yourself to blame for getting cocky, wouldn't you? <laughs> I, I hate them. I hate them so much, you guys. <laughs> huh? What are we doing now? This is a test of the Orbital Gears precision. What I want you to do is place the four colored jump cans on their corresponding tiles on the floor. It'll be harder than it looks, don't assume this is gonna be a snap. Is this? I'm never gonna hear the end of a. How I'm a clumsy excuse for a human, am I? Alright, let's get started then. Begin! Do I have to control this? No, okay. Eh, piece of cake. Wow, we got some excellent data out of that. Well done, Tita. You did a wonderful job operating it. <laughs> it just went stagnant. It may not. He just went stand made made all the difference, really. The tuning of the actuator was perfect. I don't doubt that. He's always been good at handling these things. He yeah, have acceleration control now, too. Man, was there even any point in me being here if you're just gonna ignore me? Well, the test was just about collecting data. It didn't really matter who won. Still, that's not true for the next one. <laughs> now the real fun begins. Last test we're going to be performing is a mock battle to test the overgear's overall capabilities. Take your positions, both of you. Okay. Got it. We've been through this once before, but it bears repeating. Only aim for the orbital gear. If I tilt so much of a hair out of place, Antita, you will be very painfully executed on the spot. I know, I know. You don't have to keep stating the obvious. Are you ready? Yeah. Bring it up. Oh, I get to go. Dead, isn't he? <laughs> that wraps that up. <laughs> you cheated! You totally, totally cheated! Cheated how? You're full of shit. I am not! You used some kind of invisible special power! You must have! Like, like hell I did! Alright, alright. Well, I think it's only fair to call this Agate's victory. <laughs> That's the last of the tests, right? Across the field, though. My work's here's done. 
Silly me, I nearly forgot, Dan. Didn't you say you wanted a one-on-one -on -one fight against this red-headed ruffian yesterday? Did I? Oh, right. I did. Yes, he's told me a little about him, so I'd like the opportunity at some point. What? I have a bad, bad feeling about this. <laughs> You're the best. Go get your weapon. It doesn't necessarily have to be now. No, you're doing it now! No time to waste! Alright, I'll leave things here to you, Erica. Don't think this is going to be easy, either. He might have been forced to retire because of an injury, but he's still very strong. He's the one who taught Cassius the basics of fighting with a staff ten years ago, even. Seriously? Cassius then went on to perfect the art of using one to fight himself, admittedly, but that should give you an idea of just how strong my aunt's hubby is, surely! Eh, I really don't want to back down. Hey, wait a sec. The tests are over. My work is done. Why am I stuck doing another completely unrelated fight? Your work's not done until I say it is, bucko. Oh, yeah. Well, we're waiting for Dan. I need to check Tita hasn't got any injuries. Because if she has, you know what's going to happen. Come on down, Tita. What's wrong, sweetie? I kind of can't. Some weird errors come up and I don't know what to do. Huh? What's going on? Oh no! No! Damn it, no! No matter what commands I try to give it, it just won't respond! Shut it down, Tita! I can't! It won't do anything until it too! Hey, what's going on here? Explain this in a way I can understand! Um. Ah! Tita, what's going on? Have you lost control of it? Come on out. I can't. The seatbelt's stuck. Damn it. <laughs> Good. So then I can tap. Are you two okay? Tina, I'm fine, but... Worried about now. Hey, I said I'm fine, alright? This is nothing. Stop your crying, alright? But this is all because of me. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I, I'm not gonna do this anymore. I quit. So, uh... Don't you dare give up, Tita. 
You heard me. Don't you dare throw in the towel over something this small. You want to get closer to Ren, right? You want to understand her better, right? Then try and do it. Don't just give up at the first hurdle you come across. <laughs> when you get hurt? I've had a worthless ten years, Tita. I'm not going to deny that. There's one thing I can never bring myself to do. Let's throw this away. Never. That's fine. Because this is why I'm the bracer that I am now. Plenty of folks have things that become such a big part of them, they can't bear to throw them away or leave them behind. Things that, no matter how much they try to forget, they just can't. I've got something like that. And I'm pretty sure you've found something like that, too. Mm -mm. Thank you. That's right. I... I really do. Um, I can't... I... I changed my mind. I won't give up. I don't have time to stand around crying. Now what I've got things I need to do. I'll think about what I can do, and I'm going to do it. Because just like you're a bracelet, I'm not a researcher. Really now. And again? It's nothing. Head pet! <laughs> what are the faces? It's all starting to make sense now. See, I told you. He's rude, he's thick-headed, and he's got all the tactical wrench to the coin. There's promise in him, that there is. The preparations yet for it aren't quite finished, but I think it's time we got to the second phase of testing our red-headed friend right away. What the hell are you talking about? Hey, it looks like I underestimated you, Agate. Tita seems to have come out of this unharmed, just as you promised. Oh, yeah. I'd like you to come to our house this evening. Huh? I thought coming over to dinner was why I was here in Zeiss to begin with. You'll be more than welcome. What's going on with him all of a sudden? I get it! Oh, thank you very much again for earlier. You ended up having to protect me again. That's fine. It doesn't bother me. Still, sorry, but I think I'm gonna have to pass on to- Today we're having a hot pot full of mushrooms and wild plants and a soup with lots of seaweed. Mom and Dad finally seem to understand you better too, so this should be really fun! <laughs> now we all get to enjoy a nice hot pot together. Uh oh Right. <laughs> I can hardly wait. Now that's what it was. I can't believe I didn't notice that when I'm doing the final checks. This is all my fault. We don't know that for sure yet, Tita. Let's not jump to conclusions. No good comes from blaming yourself for feeling responsible before we know if you even had anything to do with it. Okay, still... Ah! Where the hell did this hammer come from? What's wrong with this place? Huh? That's not as I get it. Really? Probably just your imagination. Maybe. That reminds me, he should be here any minute now. I better go and warm up the food. Lances pop onto the ground. Um, Erica, I think lances may have been overdoing it a tad. At least stick with the concealed holes in the ground, won't you? Gah! Um, how long are we looking at before he's able to make it here? Might I ask? I was hoping to take this chance to have a man-to-man -man talk with him. <laughs> that only the goddess knows. Seems like he's putting up a good fight. But make no mistake, I could frozen her. Our testing process has only just begun! I hate her. I hate her so much. <laughs> oh, thank God! Alright, back to the Hermit's Garden! And, oh no, it's Sundor. Oh no, a fishing minigame? Oh no! Alright, one second, I gotta go. Do do a thing. Do 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 do.
I am trying to summon water. This game has a lot of talking. Thank you. Alright, we gotta change up our party now. Which is done with the start menu. I need You're Joshua. Right. And I also need Chloe. Because I will need her for the rest of the chapter. Alright. Now that's done. Cube. We will do Moondor. Fine, I will save the game. Water has arrived. The first week. Well, hello there. No need to be so afraid. I am but a humble magician. I will heal your broken heart for you. Provided, of course, I am compensated. days with the same words repeating endlessly like a broken record. But somehow I had no idea who was saying them. All I knew was that. I... Huh? I can't find him anywhere. He's supposed to be hurt resting now not wandering around. Joshua, where the heck are you? Joshua! Her baby sneakers. Oh, there you are! What are you doing out here? You gotta start taking it easy! Why? I'm fine. Are you sure? Is your fever gone? It's just a temporary one as a result of my injuries. My temperature went back down this morning. I'm fine now. Really? <sighs> Yay, that's good. You were moaning over and over in your sleep. I was worried about you. Did I say anything? Oh. What could I ask? So, um, you're feeling better? You wanna play together? Must have been pretty boring to sleep all the time. Mm -hmm. I know it's worrying for me, but I'm stuck in bed with a fever. I hate not having anything to do. Oh, but you probably shouldn't be running around with your foot all messed up. I guess tag and kick the can won't work. If you want to play, play by yourself. Just stay away from me. This is probably going to get dangerous here soon. It is? Grateful for you, to you for taking care of me. Pass that on to Cassius Bright, too. No gloomy faces allowed! When you're feeling down, the best thing to do is do something you enjoy. Well, thank you, right up. Wait here, okay? I'll bring you stuff you really like. Pinky swear. There still doesn't seem to be any signs that anyone's gonna come after me. It's bound to happen eventually. I've got two or three days at the most before they find this place. Two or three days. Joshua! Here you go, press it for me. So cheer up, okay? I still proudly presented Joshua with a couple of roly-folies. 
What is she doing? And thank you! They can't look if you poke them! I'm fine, thanks. What? How come? They're so cute! Because I don't. Also, stop coming over here. Stay away from me. So you want another kind of bug, huh? That wasn't what I was trying to say. Hold on, I know lots of bugs! How about this? It's a dragonfly! I don't want one of these either. Okay, but how about this? You gotta like these! Behold! A Melgan Monitor Lizard! What? You're one tough cookie! Look, this isn't about what I like. I don't want any kind of bug or lizard or anything you have to offer me. Uh, this is my favorite, too! What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I feel more and more like there's something I'm missing here. Sit down for a minute, Joshua. I've got a serious question to ask. I'm already sitting. What kind of bugs do you like? Big ones? Pretty ones? Ones with lots of legs? Ones with long feelers? Ones with shells? Wings? Wet feet? I don't want any bugs at all. What? I'm gonna have to pull out all the stops. I need something so surprising you'll change your mind. Don't move a muscle! I'll find something! I will! She sure likes bugs, doesn't she? funny face, too. No, I can't let this get me down. Now, with how sad Joshua looks like now, he's in so much pain, and he can't move around or do anything fun, either. Seems I gotta find him the ultimate bug to cheer him up. Oh, it's back! You get back here! It's so quiet here. I mean, after all, I've been through this. the first time I've been in a situation like this. Joshua! do I have to tell you I don't want any bugs before it gets through? Are you even listening? Look ho! I hereby name this the human moth, because the pattern on its wings look like a human face! What the heck? <laughs> I knew this surprise you! Except it didn't. I knew my efforts would pay off big time! Next time I'm gonna bring back something even more awesome! Whee! She's so obnoxious. No, you're an emo kid. Cheer up! She's back. Joshua! <laughs> Geronimo! You two gonna drown? anything for me. I'm gonna catch one for me. If I don't catch anything, I'll have to go without lunch. Now what's up? She doesn't listen to a word anyone says to her, does she? Oh, I got a bite. Ah! Oh, it's a date. And it's tiny. Daddy's getting this one. He probably just spent the day messing around instead of working anyway. He doesn't deserve a cool fish. What? Okay, next one I catch is definitely mine. Hi ho! She doesn't know anything about casting Sprite. So he tells his daughter nothing about what he does. Fits his profile, I suppose. Aw, oh, got away. This one's not gonna be so lucky, though! Ah, tuck! Okay, maybe not. Hmm? 
No, it's nothing. Is it always so bright? I mean, are you hurting my eyes? Gotcha! This one's gonna be huge! Come to me, lunchy fishy! Looks the same as the other shape. The heck? It's a baby! The second week. You think she's okay? She didn't come over to the shop yesterday, either. I still think you're worried about nothing. Estelle's okay. She always does whatever she wants when she wants. You just come over to play every day. Estelle! It's Alyssa! Estelle! Come outside! You don't think she's been abducted, do you? I think I thought she got attacked by monsters in the woods and ended up experiencing a slow, drawn-out death more than that. That sounds like the way she'd go. That's so gross! That's where she gets her going into the woods all the time to play. Oh no, poor Estelle! You, you know I'm joking, right? Come on out, Estelle! Alyssa's gonna cry if you don't! If you're looking for Estelle, she's out at the moment. Someone you know? We've been trying to talk to him for ages now, but he won't tell us anything. He keeps telling us everything we ask is none of our business. Estelle, are these your friends? Yeah, they are. Seems they're not lying about that part, huh? They don't seem to have undergone any kind of training either, and their guard is virtually non existent. It's about time they found me. It doesn't look like these two have anything to do with them. He's barely talked ever since we got here. I've never seen him around Roller before. How do you even know him? Oh, cause daddy gave him to me as a present. He's my new little brother! He is? Wow, I sure wouldn't have guessed that. Neither would I, because it doesn't make sense. That's not how getting a little brother works. But it's true! Right, Joshua? No, it isn't. Hey, wait a minute! Listen, young man! Listen to what your older sister tells you! As if someone like you could be my older sister. Huh? Why? I'm not here to be friends with you. The only reason I'm here at all is that things just worked out that way. So Cassius Bright said, wasn't it? Oh, and one more thing. Can you stop bringing me bugs? I don't know what your obsession of them is, but being too much of a meddler is gonna end up with you getting hurt. You can shut up anytime. Got you. I win from today until forever. I'm your big sister. No backsies allowed. Yeah, then they wind up dating. Weird how that works. She do this every single night. We should mind our own business.
Joshua. Determined to sleep outside again, hmm? Not a fan of sleeping in the same room as Estelle, I take it. She's way too much of a meddler. She's also completely clueless. I have no idea how much danger she's willingly exposing herself to. Why don't you tell her, Cassie Sprite? She has a right to know. Why do you stand by and say nothing? The room next to Estelle's has been used as a storage room for a while now, but it could still be converted into a bedroom if need be. Might actually be perfect for you. I haven't been in there in a while, but I think there might already, even already be a bed in there. I'm fine as I am. I don't need a room. I'll give you that Estelle loves poker nose and anything and everything that catches her interest. And I can see how, from your perspective, that makes her look like a simple-minded, clueless child. But that's where you're mistaken. It's not her who's clueless, it's you. Estelle knows exactly what she wants out of life and what she has to do to get it. Those things are part of what makes her who she is. Although I can't deny that I was hoping to raise her to be more of a, well, ordinary girl than she'd grown up to be. Still, compare that to you, Joshua. You don't have a clue what you want anymore. You don't know what you should be doing. Which of you is really in the right here? Hi. Just so we're clear, whatever you decide to do, I have no intention of indulging you. I'm not going to tell you to leave, but I'm not going to tell you to stay, either. What you want to do, where you want to go, who you want to become, those are all things for you to decide, and you alone. No one can make that decision for you. Who knows what, no one knows what kind of decision you'll make. Only you. I just what do I want? Several weeks later. Several peaceful weeks passed. Joshua's injuries continued to heal, and it wasn't long before he was able to walk with ease again. Estelle was jumping for joy at this fact, using it as an excuse to drag him out to play with her at every possible opportunity. For him, however, it meant more than deciding what game to play next. He had to decide what course of action he was to take. The time for him to make his choice was drawing near. South, Ursel Farm. Ursel? That's the short haired girl's last name, right? Uh huh, this is where Kia lives. Guess what, though? Her mom had twins! As if I needed to guess anything, he wouldn't shut up about it when he first heard the news. I've also been uh, uh, to see them over and over as it is. Are they still exciting enough to want to keep visiting? Oh, we're not here to visit them today, we're here to help with the farm! Right now, it's harvesting time, but Miss Hannah's kind of stuck with the babies, so they need some help. And when Alyssa told me about it, I wanted that help to be me. Well, it's nice of you to offer, but why do I have to come too? Because I said so! No complaining! Let's go! This is part of your rear hillbilly process! I told you, it's rehabilitation. Rear hillbilly! <laughs> I don't know, I think Estelle's got it right. Estelle! Oh, Joshua came too? I bet you dragged him along by force, didn't you? Hey! You come to help! Oh well, music to my ears. Thanks so much for coming over. You did an awful lot for us while Hannah was pregnant as it was. Aw, that was nothing! Piece of cake for me! <laughs> You're a force to be reckoned with, Estelle. Oh, but who is... He's Estelle's new little brother. You know about him, I told you before. His name's Joshua. Oh, that does ring a bell. I wonder we had a big fight with her at some point. Why, hello to you, too. I'm so sorry to make you two out, but again, you've been helping out so much as it is. If I could get right back to work, I would, but... Easy now. You need to rest for a while longer before we can start thinking about that. Why? I was back to, to work in no time after Tia was born. Just put her on my back and got right to work again. Really? How am I supposed to know? I was a baby. Sticking twins on my back is probably pushing it, though. Oh, who's our new black-haired friend? That's Joshua. Tia told us about him a while ago. Right, a sales younger brother, I remember now. Why, oh, isn't he adorable? Have you come to help us too? Sorry if it's not much fun. Wait, is that a bandage I see? Uh-oh, you're right. Didn't even notice that you pointed it out. The injuries are more or less healed. You don't have any effect on my ability to work. But more or less healed means they're still healing. You can't ask an injured boy to do all work for us. You need to sit and rest. 
funny. I had the perfect idea. Okay, let me explain the harvesting process. Still, Alyssa, Tia, you can handle the fields in this area here. Try and start from the fields on the north side. It'll probably be more efficient to split up, too. Friends and I will take care of the vegetables in the greenhouses. And as for Joshua... I'll leave taking care of the babies to you. The boy is Will and the girl is Sherry. Understood. Well, let's get to work. If you run into any problems or there's something you don't understand, don't be afraid to ask. Okay! Last few weeks, there's been no sign at all that anyone's coming after me. Why not? I must have worked out where I am by now. So am I supposed to take this to mean that they're not interested in me anymore? They just stole my memories and cast me aside? But still, I still feel like I've lost something really important to me. What is it? Just what have I... Joshua! What have I... Joshua! What? Are you listening, Joshua? Estelle? Check this out! Still held out a large carrot. Isn't it cool? I harvested this myself! And it's like plant too! Look, it's so shiny! Uh, hmm? What? You do know you scraped your knee, right? Huh? One day you'll learn to think before you leap, or at least learn to take care of yourself after. Come on, let me take a look at it. Okay! Joshua took out some disinfectant. Ow, that stings! Just endure it, I'll be over soon. I swear, she takes scratches and scrapes like a nightmare. I wonder if she hasn't caught tetanus or something. Huh? Joshua? I really do love causing people trouble. Hey! I, I never asked you to do anything for me! This makes me cause people even more trouble. If you don't do anything about your injuries or even notice them, and it just makes more work for others. You're a danger to yourself no matter how you look at it. Anyway, Joshua, why do you... Oh, she's got the back of her hand, too. Yeah! Tell me where you're gonna put that stuff if we're doing it! Joshua finished treating his toes wounds. There, I'm done. Try and take a bit more care in the future, unless you want a lot more of that stuff being up... Uh... Hey, the game did it for me. Oh no! What can we do? I didn't do anything. Looking after them is my job. You go back to your own work. know what sounds babies make. I have no maternal instinct whatsoever. Well, they stopped. Are you sure you hit not their mom? I am not even going to dignify that with an answer. Let's go back to work. You're never gonna finish if you're not doing anything. Oh, okay. Thanks, Joshua. Thanks. You know, I don't think baby is just, like, being, like, laid on the ground. I mean, I don't know a lot about babies, but I feel like that's true. Oh, he's so cool. I didn't know he could do that. He had some boy playing the harmonica beautifully with the sun and the sun in the background. There's a picture if I ever saw one. You know, he, did you know he could play a song? Ugh. Supposed to be my brother, and he never told me at all. He is gonna get a huge lecture later. Oh, Estelle, what are you getting so mad for? Oh, well, hello there. There's no need to be so afraid. I am but a humble magician. I will heal your broken heart for you. Provided, of course, I am compensated. I finally understand. I finally know what I lost. Everything that was important to me. My happy memory is all that made me myself. That was the compensation I gave. 
All that remains now is a dull, twisted, broken fragment of who I was. Someone who exists only to destroy what others love. I need to leave. <laughs> if I stay any longer, I'll end up destroying the happiness of everyone around me. I need to keep the things that I care about as far away from me as possible, not close by. I need them to be far, far out of my reach. And I need to do it now, or the darkness would then may contaminate this place forever. I need to leave. Or my very existence causes her irreparable harm. Irreparable harm. English is a hard language. The next day... I can't believe him! Not even a Jumbo Mantis or a Double Seahorse were enough to get a reaction. These have really fancy tastes. <laughs> okay, today will be the day I'll impress him. Oh, yes. No one can resist the power of the Bug of Legends. Well, hello there, Estelle. What are you doing standing around out here? Are you off to do some bug catching? I sure am, but today's not just going to be any bug catching day. Oh, do tell. <laughs> today, I'm going to make a special syrup that attracts bugs. And with it, I'll be able to catch a super amazing one. Really? That's interesting. But seriously, sweetie, you're 11 now. And a girl. I think you should be starting to dress a bit more like one at your age. But sir, these are comfier and way easy to move around in. Anyway, bye! If so... <sighs> Some things never change. Okay, first I need to get all the ingredients I need to make my super duper syrup. Melissa should be able to get me some dragon meat, so that's easy. Then this is fresh milk and fresh eggs. She will get me some of my ass nicely. Maybe. Well, obviously we check for new sneakers. Mm, actually, it might be more fun to go check the shop for new sneakers right now. Green on! Hey, Estelle. Take it here to look at sneakers. You bet! Are there any new ones in? You sure do have nothing at all. <laughs> Sorry, kiddo. Next delivery is due the 16th of my schedule's only indication. The 16th? That's only a week away. One more week. Just one more week. Um, so... Oh, hi! <laughs> you came at just the right time. Found some clothes I think would look so cute on you. Today will be the day you finally get to realize your potential as a girl with some nice clothes. But I can't wear them now. I'm going bug catching. They'll get dirty. Wait. I'm going bug catching! I almost forgot because I was thinking about sneakers. Back to getting ingredients! Time to go see Alyssa! Full speed ahead! What is it that little bundle of energy didn't already have enough to power an airship? Now she's got more than ever. I wonder what's gotten her so fired up. Yesterday, and I heard him play the harmonica again. You'll be lucky to get that out of him. He won't even talk now. He hasn't said a word since we heard him playing. What? For real? Yeah. Maybe it was my fault for taking his harmonica without permission and trying to play it too. Oh, you silly thing. Listen, Estelle, Joshua doesn't seem to want to talk about it, but it feels to me like he's had some kind of painful experience that's bothering him. So. Oh, I know. You do? He's got something serious on his mind. I can tell. Sometimes I look at him and it looks like he's really in pain about something. But I don't think I'd be able to help him with whatever it is, even if I knew. So that's why I just want to try and cheer him up in my own way for now. Aw, so it's sweet of you. Anyway, give me some dragon beans! That? Like the coffee beans? And you're gonna use those for... That's a secret! You're so weird, Estelle. Well, okay, hold on a sec. I'll go get some. Tio's house. I need to get some fresh milk and eggs from her. The heck are you planning, Estelle? <laughs> I'll show you later. You may pass out from surprise, though. You know what? I think I'm okay with not knowing. Anyway, see you later. Aw, not what she told me. What's up? 
Wait, forget it. I know, just from how you're dressed. <laughs> Today's about catching a special though. But first, I need some fresh milk and fresh eggs. What in the heaven's name do you need those for? I'm telling you, suddenly developed an interest in cooking or something. Well, I still explained what she was trying to do. Bug of Legends? Yep, I'm trying to get Joshua the surprise of his life. I'm still not sure I'm following all of this. Let me try again. I guess you're trying to make some kind of aromatic capable of attracting that bug. Probably. Just whatever you do, promise not to get any of it on me, alright? I won't, I won't. I don't know if I believe you. Here's what you wanted. Uh, one more thing before you go, with Cell. Hmm? If you really see him as your little brother, you should start gradually opening up to him about the past. Try getting him to do the same with you, too. Maybe try talking to him about your mom? Yeah, I can do that. Doesn't feel like the kind of thing you need to sit and have a big, serious discussion about, though. We're always gonna be together, so I think you'll get it eventually. Because we're family now. Well, I tried. That's a very you way to look at it, but I mean that in a good way. <laughs> Thanks, Tio! Okay, I've got everything I need now. All I gotta do is head to Miss Wall to catch me the Bug of Legends! You just wait, Joshua. I'm gonna blow your socks off! Wait a second. She's not gonna go there all by herself, is she? I'm just, what is this Bug of Legends thingy anyway? for a little bit. Oh, if it isn't Young Cousteau, what are you doing here? Oh, hi, Mr. Mayor! Are you thinking of playing in the clock tower? The repairs on it were finally finished last month. Yeah, I know. Artisans of the town put all their heads together to try to make it as close to the original as possible. I tried to use as many of the original materials as I could, too. So what do you think? Looks almost exactly like it did, doesn't it? I guess. I don't really remember it that well, though. You know, looking at this clock tower fills me with a magical energy. Makes me feel like everyone can rule it. No, like everyone I've ever met is supporting this town and wishing it well. Thus? That's why this spot is really important to me. Oh. I gotcha! You just wait, Joshua! And then I'll go catch me the Book of Legends! Pardon? Um, still. Full speed ahead! Whatever was that about? <laughs> can smell the scent of my prey! Here should be good. I'm going with this one. It's just screaming, pick me! La la la! And done. Today's the day Joshua loves bugs. I mean, this bug is legendary. He's in for the shock of his life. But <laughs> oh, no. That was a terrible scream, I'm sorry. That sounded like Estelle. Something happened to her. Oh, it might not have. It's Estelle. She probably just tripped. Whatever may or may not have happened to her, it's got nothing to do with me anymore. It's got nothing to do with me anymore. Damn it. No, oh, damn. You got a bunch of it, didn't you, girl? 
This is about as much as I can do with my current stamina. He ran away. Uh, hmm. What is wrong with you? What are you even doing this far in a place that's dangerous? Did you even stop to think what might happen? You're a child. Don't put yourself in unnecessary danger. Why have you never stopped to think before diving headfirst in anything? For once in your life, try and look before you leap. Otherwise... Joshua, <laughs> you came at just the right time. It's not funny! If I hadn't... Look at this! Look, look! I finally caught one! This is it! This is the Bug of Legends! What? It's huge. <laughs> Isn't it cool? Um, Joshua? If something bad happened to you in the past, but you don't want to talk about it, then I'm not going to force you to. Just wait until you feel ready to talk about it with me. Till then, I'll be right here by your side, waiting. The other thing I'll do is give you this bug. So cheer up, okay? <laughs> You're telling me that bug's somehow legendary. Because I don't see what's so impressive about it. What?! But it's huge! This is the most awesome bug in the entire world! Nope. Not in the slightest. Ugh, you just wait! I'll find a bug that'll amaze you, even if I have to search forever and ever! So you just wait right here! Hi, hey, Nubis. You've amazed me more than any bug ever, though. Aww. Because I can't believe how much I've changed because of you. Hi, baby, sweet cat, I love you. Can you not be right here? <laughs> oh, he wants to go to the cat bed next to me, okay. You're such a strange girl. It was then that I made a promise to myself. It was for my own good and no one else's. The only condition by which I could permit something as unnatural as me to be allowed to live in this peaceful world. Doing so was the most cowardly thing I could have possibly done, but I hope you can forgive me. I was more concerned about that than continuing to deceive myself. On the final day... Wow, I can't believe how many people came to see us off! Thanks for coming! It means a lot that you came to be here with us! So, as I think you all know, Joshua and I are going to be away from the world for a while. We'll be traveling around the continent doing our bracer work from the various guilds in the country while we visit. We might be away for quite some time, too. Right now, we intend to travel across basically the whole continent. But one day, we will come back here to Roland. We promise. Yeah, we will. We'll make sure we've grown so much that you won't be able to believe your own eyes when, you come ba when we come back, too. I still can't believe you decided all of this on your own without ever consulting your loving papa. Oh, didn't they? They did not. They may that made taking time off to come see them a real pain, let me tell you. Sorry about that, Dad. We realize we didn't give you much notice with this. It's something we discussed seriously, though. Hopefully you'll be able to believe what we're doing is for the best. As long as you've given serious thought to what you're doing, you have my support. So go out there and do what you want to. I'll always be right here waiting for you. Good to hear. Thanks, Dad. You're both veteran bracers at this point, so I'm sure you don't need much in the way of advice. Instead, I'll keep this simple. From now on, it'll be up to you to decide what you need to learn and what you need to know. Focus on improving your powers of discernment. That's all I'll say. And be sure to take it to heart. Life as a bracer is very different in other countries compared to how it is here, as I'm sure you're about to find out. But the fundamentals are the same. Just do as we taught you here, and I'm sure you'll be just fine. Thanks! I'm sure all we were taught will come in handy if we ever find ourselves in a bind. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you'll be able to handle anything you find yourselves up against. We taught you yourselves, after all. Oh, your hearts with your heads held high. You'll be just fine. 
means a lot to us. Can't thank you enough for all you've taught us over the years, and I'm sure it'll keep coming in handy in the future, too. <laughs> for real, we really owe you to, too. Oh, there's no need to thank me. I've just done what I can, and I always can as your big sister. Don't eat or drink anything that seems funny while you're away, Estelle. Make sure you brush your teeth before bed, too, and that you don't get so caught up in work you forget to shower. And, and... Easy now, Stella. She's not a child anymore, you know. She knows how to take care of herself. I hope she can, because if you don't look after yourself, Estelle, I'll be showing up in your dreams! <laughs> the scary part is, I wouldn't put it past you to find a way to do that. But don't worry! That real heat won't be necessary, I swear! You take good care of her, too, Joshua. Remember... So it's a job available for you at my shop if you want it. Come back safely, you hear? I will. Please take care of yourselves while you're away. I don't want you to go, Estelle! You won't forget about me, will you? Come on now, stop crying! <laughs> of course I won't! When we settle in at whatever we end up next, we'll write to you right away, okay? Look after all this while I'm okay, okay, Tio? Oh, big guy? I will, I will. You make sure not to let Joshua get away while you're out of the country, too, okay? What? No, I noted. Do you two really have to go? Joshua! Oh, I didn't realize Will was a baby. Yeah. Oh, look at that. You got the twins crying buckets now, too. It's no surprise. It'd be hard on them. You have been looking after them since they were babies. Of course they'll miss you. <laughs> I've got tons of great memories of them to keep me company while we're away, thankfully. It's probably going to be a while before we can see any of you again. You'll never leave our thoughts. Promise. I'm gonna miss you! <laughs> the Bose-bound airliner will be departing shortly. All passengers, please board the airship at this time. Oh dear, looks like we're out of time. Oh then, take care of yourselves. We you will! You too, sir. Joshua? You made up your mind, then. I have. I want to be Joshua Bright after all. I know the name distinction might not be a big deal in the eyes of others, but it is for me. It's part of me taking the first and most difficult step of this journey. It's part of making choices only I can make for myself. By the time we come back home, I want to have the strength to probably declare living the rest of my life alongside you, Estelle, and everyone in Roland. Even after taking that first difficult step, it's not like I can guarantee it'll get any easier. Maybe on some days it'll be so hard that I'll want to give up. Right now, though, right now I'm more than happy to go out there and find my own path to walk. If I can do that, I can finally feel like I'm working towards the person I want to be. Very well, then. <laughs> That's the kind of positive attitude I wanted to see. Suits you. <laughs> Thanks. It's the best compliment you could have possibly given me. I swear, what is it for the men in our family? Would I kill the two of you to talk so that the rest of us can understand what you're saying? Well, whatever. Come on, Joshua, get on board. You're gonna be left behind. I'm coming, I'm coming. Well, see you around. Estelle, when you come back here next, I'm gonna be a bracer just like you. I am. <laughs> now that I want to see. You don't think I can do it, can you? I'm serious! By the time you get back, I'll be a bracer, I swear! I... I think I would have become one, too. So... Don't worry, we'll be back. We promise. Can't wait to work you two to the ground as co-workers. I'll be counting on you to have my back. So don't let us down, okay? I... I won't! Never forget that there's always a home for you here. No matter how long you're away, it will never change. It won't. Thanks, Dad. We'll see you later! Imagine if real airplanes waited for you to make an impassioned speech before they actually up and left. Sweet money! Alright, time to save the game, because that took freaking forever. And then we have a sun door to go to. Woo!
Ow, I just bit the inside of my cheek. Oh. This is gonna suck! I'm terrible at fishing in this game. Once upon a time, there was a girl called Estelle Bright, who absolutely loved fishing. Meanwhile, in Grandsville, there existed a group of dedicated men and women who prided themselves on the sport. They were called the Fisherman's Guild. What else could it possibly call it be called but fate were the two paths to cross? This is their peculiar story. Chapter 1, our story begins at the lakeside. The side of Valeria Lake lies a quiet little place by the name of the Kingfisher Inn. Seeking a break from her work, Estelle decided to, uh, to visit for some well-deserved relaxation. At first, she had gotten exactly that. The fishing lover she was, she decided to borrow some gear from the inn and make her way out onto the pier to enjoy some quality time there. She saw one successful catch after another, and before long her bucket was teeming with fish. But then there was Lloyd, a member of that one and only fisherman's guild, who happened to be at that very same inn and on that very same day. He was having the opposite of young Estelle's lucky streak. The moment he had arrived, he had set off in a boat to begin fishing. But try as he did, he hadn't managed to catch so much as a single fish. Now feeling thoroughly defeated, Lloyd mo mo motioned back towards the inn. Upon his boat approaching the pier, however, he caught sight of none other than a very pleased Estelle rejoicing the size of her most recent catch. It was all it took to give rise to Lloyd's competitive nature. Now thoroughly fired up, he approached her and challenged her to a special kind of duel. And that's why I want to challenge you to a five-round angler's duel. Uh, what now? Five-round angler's duel! It's a special kind of competition we fishermen take part in, where they stake their pride and honor on the outcome. Once a member of the Fisherman's Guild mentions those words, there can be no turning back. The duel must take place. So let us do battle with our finest fishing tackle on the line. I feel like I'm getting dragged into something completely nuts, so I need to break it to you, but I don't have any stellar fishing tackle to bet on this. All my stuff is borrowed from the inn. And you don't need to bet anything at all. That's fine. This duel is more for my own good than yours, and I intend to see it through no matter what. <laughs> Doesn't sound like I've got much choice but to go along with this, huh? Aww. Wow, this is really hard to read. But I can do better. Ha! Good catch. I'm still winning though, so that's good. You get cocky. I'm just getting started. Now which rod should I use? What about bait? Bug. Cast off. Opportunity. Now, which one should I use? What about me? Castle! 
Dios. Wow, this one's a big one. Ooh, long fish. Wonder how my opponent's doing. Not bad, but I can do better. Ha! Ah. What? Alright, gotta make the most of this opportunity. Now, which route should I use? What about bait? I use the river, but the portal still choose the row. Castle! Wow, do I even need to try? Nope. Oops, maybe my nerves are getting the better of me. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter. He'd have to get... Again, take this baby so he needs Oh, I got it all. Yeah, but we got the same thing, so I still won. Woohoo! I won! Oh, I lost. What a battle. You fought admirably, Estelle. There's no shame in losing against someone as talented as you. Here, I want you to have this. Estelle handed Lloyd a silver covered drawer. A lure made out of Arjun? I can possibly take this. It looks so expensive! No can do. Those are the rules. I challenged you to a duel, putting this on the line, and I was defeated. If you refuse to accept it, that will bring me even greater shame than I already face. So please, accept it. Well, if you really insist. Thus, Estelle accepted the silver lure from Lloyd. And though feeling bliss thanks to her victory, she was also blissfully unaware of what fate had in store for her. Oh no. I'm very afraid. Oh god, we have to keep going. There's more. Oh no, there's more. <laughs> Today was yet another day in which Estelle found herself roaming the north block of Gransel City's sewers. Her objective was simple, defeat a water monster for the guild. But down there she found more than just monsters. In addition to the nasty she'd become accustomed to braining on a regular basis, she also came face to face with a young noblewoman whose delicate demeanor could have, couldn't have looked more out of place. Still certainly hadn't expected this. What are you doing down here? She asked. The woman tittered and responded as if the answer were the most obvious thing in the world. What else? Fishing, of course. The noblewoman's name was Norsha, and it turned out she was a member of the Fisherman's Guild. Do you really have to fish here of all places, though? I mean, what if monsters find you? Estelle made up her mind to try to escort the woman back to the city with her, but Norsha had other ideas, and she refused to budge from what she felt was a prime fishing spot. The two were soon locked in a battle of pure stubbornness. Neither would simply back down gracefully, as it wasn't to their natures. It was in the middle of a heated argument when the silver lure Estelle kept in her person fell from her pocket. Is that the famous silver lure? One of the three famed fishing tackles? Where in Adios' name did you obtain such a thing? Uh, I don't know anything about famous fishing tackles, but I guess you mean this guy here? And one from Lloyd. <gasps> so you fought an angler's duel against him, did you? I'd intended to challenge him to one myself when the time was right, but I never imagined he would be defeated before then. Okay, I am so lost right now. Very well! I shall challenge you to a ten round angler's duel at his place! Ten rounds? Listen, lady! I will not accept no for an answer. Let us begin! Wait a sec. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, which one should I use? Ooh, we have multiples. I 
my puppy. Here it goes. Yeah. Easy peasy. Wow, 18. Now, which rod should I use? Progress rod. What about beep? Cast off! Yes! Okay. Not bad! Wonder how my opponent's doing. Almost hit it too early, I was scared. Oh no. Oof. Okay, she's still about 40 points behind me though, so... That was late too, okay. This is so stressful! <laughs> Thank you. 
Yes, okay. Look at her rod, it goes, look, 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 look. Can't use this one anymore. Bamboo? Ten for ten. Okay. She'd have to pull something incredible to win at this point, but I don't put it past this game. Gracious, no! Wow. How could this have happened? How could I, of all people, be defeated? Well, you satisfied now? You are. It's time you came back with me to the city. Trust me, it's not safe down here. You were truly more worried about me than winning the duel, weren't you? <laughs> no wonder I couldn't defeat you. Now, if you will. Kindly accept this. So I received a golden rod from Norsh. Wow, that's so shiny. Are you sure I can have this? In fact, I insist. I'd be more troubled if you didn't accept it. These are the laws behind Angler's duels, as you know. Still, kindly remember that you have more to fear than just me. No getting complacent simply because I fell in battle. You're still our guild's leader to defeat, after all. Aw, oh, man, is he really that good? Indeed, his name is Mr. Fisher, and he is both this guild's founder and its most capable member. Knowing that may incline you to avoid facing him, but don't think you'll be so lucky. With the two tackles you now possess, he will come for you. A duel with him is nigh, whether you desire it or not. Alrighty then, if you say so. I still, at this point, I still, still, still have no idea just how capable this fisher may prove to be. Well, there was a small part of you that couldn't uh, help but regret fighting the lure of the Fisherman's Guild. There was a much greater part that couldn't deny wanting to see what this journey would take her. Let's go to chapter 3, unless it doesn't let us. A plate of excellence! We gotta... We gotta... I don't want to come back to this. Final chapter. Battle at Azalea Bay. Along the shore off Gull's Seaside Way, near Ruin, the decisive moment that Norsha had foretold was finally to come. Whether their meeting was a coincidence or fated all along, no one could possibly say. Estelle was idly walking along shore for no particularly adequate reason, when all of a sudden a single small yacht drew closer and closer. The yacht eased as close to the shore as it could safely get, and from on top of it stepped a fine man. It was a gentleman in a tuxedo. He is a gentleman in a tuxedo, the sea extending into the distance behind him, making for an equally elegant backdrop. As soon as she saw him, she knew he was the leader Norsha had spoken of. Mr. Fisher, bearer of the title Evan Endler, known as the nickname of Fishing Baron. <gasps> that lord! That rod! Are you the Fisherman Guild's president? I'm... No, there is no need for words now. I have been awaiting this moment for longer than you could possibly imagine. I challenge you to a 15-round angler's duel immediately. Fifteen? We're gonna be here all day, aren't we? Let the battle begin! I knew it was gonna be 15, because they added five last time. It only made sense for them to do it again. Uh, I don't want to. I love how he has a little flag. Now, which rod should I use? I gotta try the new guy. Shrimp it. Cast 
Pizza. I'm going to have a aneurysm at the end of this. It's so cute! <laughs> This is incredibly not how fishing works, despite never having been fishing myself. There's no way to turbo through this section. So I mean, sorry, I was planning to use it every five, but uh, can't. Let's try the Kasago with it. Kasago? Not sure how that should be pronounced. Oh, it's biggin. Claudine. <laughs> tried this combination, so let's go. I hit the button too early, but I I got it anyway. I panicked. <laughs> oh no, he's got a big one. Oh no.
I don't want to have to redo this thing. Oh no. Up to it. Fucking really? I hate this. Finally. I'm dying. I'm dying, friend. I hate this. I'm gonna have to redo this one because I have stand no fucking chance. Pray for me. <laughs> please miss, please miss, please miss, please miss, please, 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 damn it. idea you would prove to be quite so skilled. The earlier time for adults to be leading the way has passed. I ask that you accept this. Fisher handed over a rainbow colored fishing line. Wow, this is so pretty! Thank you very much! I can hardly believe the time has finally come for the three famed fishing tackles to be gathered in the hands of one owner. You said your name was Estelle, yes? Y yeah, I did, but... 
I've made up my mind. Starting today, you will be the new leader of the Fisherman's Guild. What? What? As for me, I suppose I'll assume the title of Honorary President from this day forward. This is a time for young people like you to take center stage. I hope you will dedicate yourself as best as you can to spreading and furthering fishing culture. Uh, hold on! You can't just shove that kind of responsibility on someone! I'm not gonna be the leader! After roughly an hour of continuous negotiations in which neither of them wished to back down, Estelle was able to convince Mr. Fisher that the burden of being leader was too great for her, and she was granted an honorary membership in the guild instead. But while Estelle's duels were over, news of what had happened spread like wirefire among fishermen, spawning legends that would persist much longer. Henceforth, whenever they spoke of Estelle, they spoke of her with a new nickname. A fitting nickname for one who had triumphed in such challenging angler's duels. Estelle, the Supreme Fisher. Thank God that's over with. <laughs> Alright, I think I have to put that on a style if it makes sense to do so. Alright, first we save game for Mother because, oh dear lord. Next we go to our equipment screen because it still doesn't have anything right now and she should. Oh, it's a still old even. So yes, we absolutely need that on her. And what else we got here? I'm gonna put the lunar seal on her. Alright, let's save again, because I made some party changes. And then we gotta get going on this game, so voice playing! Watch! Switch off to the thing, because I need to... Get my map up. Because I can't see where the heck I'm going! After you guys told me what happened, but seeing the place you trained at, the ones trained at like this is weird. So this warp thingy here is gonna take us to the next plane? That's right, the next should be the fifth. Presumably the first of the more advanced game boards the Lord of Phantasma mentioned. But you're gonna be in for a really tough ride, aren't we? But hey, we've come through plenty of those just fine. We can knock this one out too. I certainly hope so. Hmm, hmm? something wrong? No, but I do have a question. Why did you specifically put your name forward to accompany me? Huh? Is it really that big a deal? I can't think of any specific reason you could have to offer to support me. You know, making a request, your eyes were filled with determination and resolve, so it wasn't something you did on a whim. You don't mind my inquiry, do you? Nope, it wasn't a whim, though, so you're right about that. It's just that I don't have some big special reason for doing it, either. Mm, I guess I just wanted to give something back. What do you mean? Well, like, Kevin did a lot for me back during all that trouble in the borough. He bailed me out of trouble more times than I can count, and he helped Joshua deal with what was burdening him, too. Now he's in trouble just like we were, so... It's this thing where I found myself wondering whether there was anything I could do to help. Coming and backing you up was the best way I could do that. Still... I'm still not sure that I understand. I understand that you feel indebted to Kevin, but how does helping me go towards repaying that? Isn't that obvious? You're super important to him, aren't you? What? <laughs> I'm not implying you're going out or anything. Just from all I've heard and seen since getting here, it seems like you basically view each other as family. I'm not wrong, right? Oh, well, you're right. Before all this started, we hadn't met for almost five full years. The only reason we met again at all was because of work. 
I'm not sure there's any bond between the two of us at all anymore. Yeah, I'm not buying that one. What's so funny? The connections between people deepen over time become bonds, and once such bonds are formed, they can never be broken. However far apart those people may be, no matter where life may take them, those bonds will always exist in some way. Not my words, by the way, but just something some old guy I know said to me a while back, and I happen to agree with him. Heaven was happy to entrust everything to you without a second thought, right? You were talking like he knew what he was thinking earlier, too, about how he was going to tell us about his stigma? That's proof enough that there's still a strong bond between you. I wish I could be so confident. Still, I can understand why you wanted to come with me now. I appreciate it, too. Thank you, Estelle. You're very welcome! I do have one more question, though. It's something of a personal one, however. Huh? Like what? I'll answer it if I can. This is a good chance to get to know each other. Alright, forgive me if this sounds blunt, but... Do people often tell you that you're too soft for your own good? What? <laughs> what are you laughing for? I think I have my answer. At least let me answer before making up your mind. Eh, screw it. Let's get going. Right behind you. Where are we now? Seems to be another enclosed dimensional space. Like a giant labyrinth of marble in the rip between dimensions. Or at least that's how it appears. Yeah, this will be a blast to go through. We're gonna need to put our backs into this one. Indeed. Quite immediately, too. Huh? What? Careful, everyone. Oh, I don't like that fleshy claw thing. Oh, spiders! These are dream spiders. They're foul beasts that devour people's dreams and replace them with nightmares. Uh, this plan's off to an awesome start. Well, whatever. Let's kick some devil butt! Oh, an incubus. Beautiful. No, I need that. Ow. We're good to go. I think that was the last of them. Yeah, I'm Bush. So those are the kind of devils you were talking about back in the garden? More specifically, it's a subspecies of devils known as dream devils. We're said to specialize in attacking the mind, and I think we've confirmed that to be perfectly accurate. We're gonna need to put more than our back uh, put in more than our backs at this rate. How about we double check our equipment one last time before we head on? That certainly sounds wise. There's no such thing as being too cautious. Yeah, I should probably know what's going on in this hell's orbit. Pretty good, damn. Yeah, I don't think I need to up her anywhere. Joshua said to use some threes, but nothing big. One, let's do that, because we did lose a little bit. I don't know, I want to spend all that. 
Hit four I want. Hit four I want like crazy. I don't have enough to do that. Right. Alright, uh, that's not that important to me. I need to be on workman, not a clip. But you could use some stuff. How are you doing? Action four for you. Oh, I do have a page. I have a page for You can have that. Uh, EP could. I don't think I've got anything for it. So I, there is nothing better than that. I didn't make that. I did make this. I have several. Um, I didn't mean to hit that button. I just realized why it smells like pumpkin down here. I'm like, wow, it's really weird that it smells like pumpkin. It's because my husband is upstairs carving the pumpkins for Halloween. <laughs> I am not smart sometimes. That's also not what I want. I didn't get more evade, did I? Or impede. I didn't know. Um, do I have more defense? Nope. She can't do that because I need to upgrade it. So let's go make more defense and HP then, and also fix racist slots because you should have twos here, at minimum. Um, reports. Yes, please. And I already have that, don't I? Might be on somebody else, so. Yeah, with it, make another one. More HP quartz! All the HP quartz! Honestly, that'll be fine. Excel is fine. Probably can use more stuff, though. Can't use that because I need an upgrader. All right, let's go in and do that. That's the wrong thing slot. Chloe fours across the board. We're meant. You can use that now. I don't think I have anything to give here though, so it's kind of moot. I can get EP cut for her, like. <laughs> I can also get EP for it. I just don't know if it's worth it. Nope, Bronx Rain still. Good enough for now. All right, um, let's go shopping. That's just a straight upgrade, so I'm gonna do that. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm gonna do the ones that are straight upgrades and not much else. Okay, so equip. That means Estelle got a new weapon. Yay, Estelle. And Chloe got a new weapon. Yay, Chloe. That's a lot of Mira. That's more Mira than I have. Jesus Lord. Honestly, I'm not gonna bother with it. I'm not. We're gonna save the game and move on. All may set foot within this door to lay claim to its rewards. Ever, you must first overcome a trial. Should this fail to deter you, open the door and step inside. I mean, I can, so I guess I'm gonna. Overcome the trial before you, and I shall grant to you a memory fragment and my blessing. Okay, let's go! What are these, peanuts? Oh no, they're called mischiefs. Okay. any crowd control at all, girl. Oof. I ain't putting you that far down. Damn. useless in sky holy crap oh wow i can't believe he fucking dead hell i have my s craft i feel like i should use it There we go.
Any chance of me getting two of them with this? Nope. hit more than that, but okay. Oh, I can still do things, neato. Oh my god, we still have two of them? Fuck off. It was absolutely useless, thanks. I think I'm just gonna let her stay dead. There we go. Not done yet. You have overcome the trial. Thus I shall grant you a memory fragment and my blessing.
Orbments are devices that use the orbital energy contained within Septium to cause a variety of useful effects. It has only been a little over half a century since they were first invented, but even in such a short time, they have already revolutionized the world as we know it. From daily necessities such as lighting and heating, to tanks and other similar weapons used to defend our nations, Orbments are used in just about every facet of our lives. In fact, it's now hard to imagine life without them. So much of what we take for granted in life now involves them in some way. And it is to proliferate uh, and advance the uh, development of these ornaments that we exist. We, the Epstein Foundation. Our foundation was first established in the year 1155 of the Septian calendar, the year after Professor Epstein's passing, and was created by his brilliant-minded disciples in order to honor his wishes. The foundation is based on his home state of Le Mans, where it remains in operation to his, this day. It was rather limited in size at the beginning, and its attempt to spread orbital technology was initially met with little success, sensing that the professor's dream would never be realized at the rate they were going. Three key le researchers left them on to try and spread the seeds of orbital technology across the continent themselves. One of these was Professor G. Schmidt. Oh my god, are we getting a thing about G. Schmidt? <laughs> that asshole! Hey! The professor would gain a fine reputation of his own for his skill in the field of mechanical engineering, went around and visited corporations in various nations to persuade them of the benefits of ordnance. The second was Professor L. Hamilton. Mindful of the technological gap between regions, she long believed it was rural and remote areas that needed ornament technology more than any other. As such, she enlisted the help of the Bracer Guild, which, had already, which already had a close relationship with the Foundation, and formed a mission with the intent of promoting and spreading the technology where applicable. The Professor herself also toured the regions with the aim of spreading public awareness and laying foundations for others to build on in the future. The third was Professor A. Russell, now known far and wide as the father of the Orbital Revolution. Professor Russell returned to his home nation of Liberal and continued to work tirelessly to advance Hortman technology there. Within a year of returning, he had set up the Zeiss Engineering Factory, now known as the Zeiss Central Factory, ZCF, and created the first orbit to be made outside the Mons State. Three years later, the reigning king of Liberal at the time, Edgar III, visited the factory to inspect it, and he decided to donate a large amount of money to further its research. With his majesty's endorsement, orbits began to spread like a wildfire throughout the kingdom, bringing such prosperity that the people of other nations were filled with envy. Up until then, most people didn't see orbits in a particularly positive light, but their success in the world changed those impressions virtually overnight. One nation after another began to reach out to our foundation to share orbit technology, and with both our foundations and both our foundations' financial and social standing became that much more secure. In the eyes of the world, the orbital revolution was a sudden, far-reaching transformation. But it was only because of years of reaching out to people and, dil and diligent, largely unnoticed research that it was able to happen at all. Um, I don't like that skull-looking thing down there at the bottom. The Foundation's activities center around the following three guiding principles. Carrying out foundation. Wow, I am doing so bad at reading this. One, carrying out fundamental research on ornaments. Two, spreading orbital technology and informing the public of its benefits. Three, contributing to world peace through technology. Now then, let's discuss each of these three guiding principles in more depth. 1. Carrying out fundamental research on orbits. The Foundation's most important mission is, naturally, the improvement and development of orbital technology. The fundamental principles behind how orbits work need no improvement as such, but their architectures to their internal structures have been improved upon countless times in the past and will surely continue to be perfected by the curious mind as the years go on. Ordnance's architecture concerns the mechanical parts inside them, such as the cogs and screws, and there's still plenty of room for change as this new technology develops. These improvements can reap great rewards, but the research necessary to make them is known to be as lengthy as it is expensive. As a result, companies who prioritize profit over all else are less inclined to pursue them. That makes our Foundation's research all the more important from a social perspective. 2. Spreading orbital technology and informing the public of its benefits. Two other important goals of the Foundation are to spread orbital technology as widely as possible and to educate the public on the correct way to use it. While orbits have become part of the daily lives of most who live in advanced nations and populated urban areas, the reality in remote and mountainous regions is very different. To counter this, we have long worked to send admissions of engineers and bracers to these regions to try and better the standard of living for these people, and will continue to do so. We also continue to work on other ways to spread awareness of orbital technology, such as working closely with the Septian Church to have added to the curriculum of Sunday school classes. 3. Contributing to world peace through technology. It is to pursue this noble yet extremely difficult goal that the Foundation has had a close relationship with the Bracer Guild ever since its initial founding. The Guild was established as an international peacekeeping organization and can mediate on conflicts between nations from a neutral point of view, making it essential to the stability of our world as it stands. 
The Epstein Foundation continues to back them up fully in their cause, both with financial aid and using the fact that Lamont State is the only place where tactical ointments are produced to provide them with equipment. Just as well, this relationship also provides ideal feedback towards tweaking the quality of tactical ordnance as they are used in combat, too. Every machine and every invention goes through a long, grueling process behind the scenes before eventually reaching its finished, refined form, and tactical ordnance are no exception. Then, in S1190, our Foundation unveiled the Orbital Network Project, which will be implemented in partnership with ZCF. Said project aims to join all of Zemuria together with a single united communications network, but our hope is that it will do much more than that. Our hope is that it will help to realize a peaceful world through communication. Sadly, Ormans' relationship with peace as a concept has become somewhat complicated. Are they aiding in its realization, or are they doing the exact opposite? Professor Epstein expresses hopes that their ability to realize a limitless looping of energy would be able to bring lasting peace to the world. Instead, recent years have, been, have thoroughly betrayed those hopes, and the post-revolution world has been a chaotic one indeed. The conflict between Liberal and Arabonia, for one, made significant use of orbital weaponry, airships included. It seems beyond a doubt that orbital weaponry will continue to become more and more advanced, making war an even more tragic event than ever. In the face of all of this, how should we go about trying to create a peaceful world? We believe the best way to do this is to rely on the power of communication, and a means to do so with people of different nationalities and races. If these people can more easily un interact and more easily deepen their understanding of one another, Perhaps that will allow us to create the world we all so dearly desire. In the end, one thing is for certain. Our challenge is to try to realize Professor Epstein's ideals are only just beginning. Oh, that was interesting. And it got us money, you know. I'm gonna admit though, I read all of that, but most of it was just kind of went in on ear and out the other. Like, I said all that- oh, right, I need to revive Reese. Uh, I said all of it out loud, but, uh, not much of it stuck. <laughs> Let's get back to base and heal that up. I have gone the wrong way. Waste not, what not? Yeah, no, it wasn't super relevant. It's really just backstory stuff. Although it's funny to hear, like, Schmidt, of all people, going out to- I don't like this haunts. A nightmare, indeed! Yeah, that is what my nightmares look like. Haunts! Um... <laughs> anyway, my fear of horses aside, um... To hear that Schmidt actually went out to do something for somebody other than himself is hilarious. He doesn't do that! Oh, pitiful souls, make right, like, I guess the broken clock has to be, like, right at least once. I don't like these. They look like the things we just fought. I dislike them immensely. Let's hit it. That didn't work. Let's hit it. That worked. I know what these are. These are weak as shit. Wow, one damage. Ooh, scary. That's that. Let's move out. Spider. Kill the spider. Spider That's killed. Let's move out. Yeah, I mean, I know they exist. That's about it. Ooh, Sephith. I looked over at the map and saw it was Sephith. That's how I knew. it. I didn't just, like, magically guess ahead of time. Hans! Die, Hans!
Large unfriend. Archdevil. Yeah, not friend. I'm gonna go kill that spider if that's cool. What's, what's. Oh, there's another spider back here I couldn't see. Didn't even get a hit in. I mean, I know it's because I'm on easy, but man. Another stone? Wow, that thing sure is pretty. Is it some kind of septia? No, it's what's known as a stealing stone. You were inside one just like this when we found you. I was? Are we gonna find someone in this one too? Without a doubt. You wouldn't happen to have any inkling as to who it could be, would you? Let me think. It'd be nice if it was Dad, but I doubt we'd get that lucky. <laughs> yeah. Sounds as though there are a number of possibilities. The fastest way to find out which one rings true is to take us this back to the garden. Then let's go! Yeah, in a minute. I'm still exploring. Freaking haunts. Oh, wait, I can't go that way yet, but I can't go this way! Doot doot! Got it. My thing. Yay, stuff! did activate this. Yes, okay. So, we need to go back to the garden. What? That looks like... It, it couldn't be. Could it? You gotta be kidding me. Grenade? Who goes there? Speak your name! What? <laughs> I sure didn't see this coming! I presume you're all familiar with this man? All I can tell by the uniform is that he's from the Royal Army. Yes, we certainly are. I'm not sure what's going on here. Estelle, I'm Joshua. And is that you, Your Highness? Yes, it is. It's good to see you again, Richard. I feel the same. Pleasure is all mine, your highness. I'm delighted to see you well and in good health. <laughs> There's no need to stare at the floor when you're talking to me, you know. How have you been? Th thanks to Her Majesty's extraordinary kindness, I've been doing very well. I hope you'll forgive me to ask for asking. I'm afraid I don't quite understand the situation I found myself in. Would it be any trouble to request a brief explanation of where we stand? It would probably be easier if I handled that. I don't believe we've met. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Reese Sargent, a squire affiliated with the Growl's Ritter. The Growl's Ritter? I see. It sounds as though the situation is even more abnormal than I thought. I suppose I should introduce myself as well. My name is Alan Richard. 
I was once a colonel in the Royal Army's Intelligence Division, as well as a traitor who attempted to instigate a coup d'etat. Present, however, I run the research agency RNA Research. Thank you. I think I have a solid grasp now. I wish I knew what else to say. What do you mean? As in, like, you're having trouble believing all of what we just told you? Well, part of me feels that way, yes. But that's not really it. The greatest doubt in my mind is simply, why me? Huh? I look at everyone here, and I see comrades who know how to fight alongside one another and turn even the darkest of odds in their favor. Whether this turn of events was the will of the goddess or someone else, I can't rightly say. From where I'm standing, you've already formed the perfect team for overcoming the obstacles before you. Eh? Guess so. I sure as hell don't want to work with her, though. I don't want her stupid rubbing off on me. Oh, you're gonna feel really stupid after I swack her brain some mush. Not now, you two. <coughs> if I may. I find it hard to understand how I, of all people, came to be here. Far from working together well with all of you, I'm a criminal who threatened both your lives and the safety of the nation in which we thrive. I can't help but feel my being here is a mistake of some kind. Still, you have held this before, though. Like, during the attack on Gramsil, remember? You came to everyone's aid then. Yeah, that could have gotten really bad if you and your men hadn't showed up to help when you did. <laughs> They're right. And there was the fact that you assumed responsibility to her defending the city while all of us escorted Chloe to Hacken Gate. Yeah, you might have done some bad stuff in the past, but you aren't just selling yourself by saying you never helped us before. Be that as it may be. My good man, it's not as though you're the only one here who's performed terrible deeds. To use the occasion Joshua mentioned, while you valiantly defended Grand Soul, I was at Hawking Gate threatening rebel safety. And yet here I am, fighting alongside my friends without a care in the world. The best thing to do here, in my personal opinion, is relax. I'm not sure about boasting about how not having a care in the world is something you should be doing. I have a different perspective on those events, Your Highness. You were only threatening liberal on the surface. You had no intention of actually doing anything. On the contrary, you were trying to protect it. Same can't be said for me. My conspiracy was my own doing. Okay, but what about me? We were being used by you guys, yeah, but that doesn't change the fact that we we're a bunch of sky bandits who even hijacked an airship. But Her Majesty was gracious enough to give us another chance at life, and we're trying to make the most of it by running our new company. I don't think our positions are all that different, honestly. Well, you might have done things that you regret. But it's not the past that determines who you are. It's what you choose to do now. Exactly! And it'd be a huge help if we had someone as baller as you fighting with us. So please, we could really use your help. Are you sure, Annalise? Oh, you guys know each other? How'd that happen? Oh, <laughs> I went to visit your dad for something a while back, so that's when we met. Huh, really? After all I've heard, I see no reason to refuse your company. If anything, we're eager to welcome you to our group with open arms, myself included. Consider it aid given to the Grawls if that would make you less adverse to the idea. What do you say? Very well. You have my support. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm so glad you're with us. Thank you. <laughs> I only hope I meet your expectations. Incidentally, there is one thing I'd like to confirm first. What would that be? You said you believe everyone had been surrounded by that white light and sat here at roughly the same time. When that happened, were you all wearing the same clothes that you are now? What kind of question is that? Now that you mentioned it, how come you're wearing your military uniform? I was under the impression that you left the armed forces. That's right! Hmm. Now the question makes sense. You were wearing something different when you were sent here, weren't you? I was. Currently, I work out of an office in Ruined City, and since beginning work there, I've never once willingly worn my own uniform. When I was surrounded by that light, I was wearing a shirt and a pair of slacks as I normally do. And somehow I find myself here in this uniform. That's odd. That's not something that's happened to anyone else, either. Oh, I have a thought. My thought is that they didn't want to make a new sprite of him, so <laughs> perhaps the Lord of Phantasma decided the colonel just wasn't sexy enough and anything else and prepared that strapping uniform for him after bringing him here. That also works. Yeah, I don't think so. So in addition to the other billion ways they're a weird freak, they got a military uniform fetish too? I couldn't entirely blame them if they did, though. Analyze is kinky! Hey Merlin, sweetheart, love of my life, can you not be on my desk right now? Come on, go. Same. <laughs> the three girls are kicky. I swear, girls these days. The line, everyone. <laughs> the question mark, question mark, question mark has no idea what's going on. <laughs> Still, there's clearly got to be something to it. I get the feeling we're on the verge of a major breakthrough working out how we ended up here. So do I. The reason is kinks. <laughs> That's what I figured out. As well as what this place is, really is to begin with. Merlin, baby, you can't be up at my desk while I'm streaming. You know this. Go. Interesting. 
Okay, so let's put the matter aside for now. Now that that's settled then, we should start getting ready to resume our investigation. Releasing Richard should hopefully have opened up a new path for us to follow. Merlin! What have I just said? Like, twice. Go. Get. Alright, well. I think since we have Alan, it's only right to use Understood. him. So he's coming with us. But Chloe's not leaving because she's my wife and I love her. So, let's get back to where we were. Luminous midpoint. Oh, I should save game for mother, shouldn't I? Oh boy! Useless with arts! That's what I was supposed to take from that statement, right? <laughs> hate his voice. It's certainly something, but... <laughs> Adequate, performance. Adequate performance. Okay. Oh, I didn't even notice there was a spider. I was so focused on the haunts. I mean, I guess now that I think about it, Succubi are dream devils, so are Incubi. Okay, don't stab the spitter. You all are useless! What did I give you hit quartz for? <laughs> huh. I mean, they can feed on my uniform kinks, if you know what I'm saying. Get in there. Go in. Thank you. Hey! 
No whatever you were planning on. this system though is that like debuffs okay, don't persist no after rest. battles like death does obviously and your hp does but like if i get poisoned it's just gone after a battle and i don't have to worry about that shit no more it's nice you know like pokemon that other game I happened to play- oh, bye, Chloe. We'll fix you up in a second, don't worry about it. <laughs> haunts! Oh, two haunts. It's fine, we can deal with two haunts. We're powerful. Oh, pitiful souls, make- Oh my god, yes! What is that? <gasps> oh boy. Potter motor? Unbelievable. This is the archaism that appeared in Grantsil, yes. It looks to me to be a logic archaism used by Ouroboros. The reactions say there's more to it than that, however. You could say that, yeah. Let's go get that stone. Wasn't what I meant. To hit. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> After all this time, we finally found you. you. Must have spent a long while looking for the person inside. We shouldn't keep you any longer. Cat, get off my desk. You can be anywhere but where you are. Thank you. Let's hurry back to the garden and release them right away. Yeah, thanks, Reese. Which is exactly what I was going to do, because Chloe needs saving anyway, so let's go. Also, because we can't take Path C until we've done this, so it's kind of useless. First we heal. Don't glare at me like that, Merlin. I told you to get off my desk, like, three times already. Ren. Looks like she's fast asleep. Papa, Mama, Ren. Where am I? Oh, this is just a dream. Ren. Estelle? Joshua and Tita, too. <laughs> what a nice dream this is. Run! Oh. Oh, silly Estelle. You're supposed to be older than me. You shouldn't be acting like a clingy child. You're so warm, though. You smell so nice. It's almost like this isn't a dream at all. Never mind that. What am I doing here? It's okay, Ren. I'm going to explain now, so try to stay calm, okay? Merlin? Get down. Don't come any closer! If you take another step toward me, I will kill you! Huh? 
I'll try and handle this, Estelle. Do you mind taking a step back? Okay. I'm happy to see you again, Ren. Where have you been all this time? How is that any of your business? You're just as bad as Estelle is, Joshua. Why won't you two leave me alone and stop following me around? I figured you must have noticed. Merlin! For fuck's sake. You're right. For the past few months, we've been traveling around trying to find you. We're in Crossbow at the moment, too. Are we getting warmer? You're in Crossbow? Why? Why do you want to find me so much? I just want a chance to talk with you. We heard from a reliable source that you haven't been back to Ouroboros since we last fought. Is that true? What's that got to do with either of you? All I want is to be left alone. I don't want to talk to either of you. I don't even want to see you. So why wouldn't you just leave me be? Because... Sorry, Ren. This one's on me. Ever since you flew off, I haven't been able to get you off my mind. I've been getting Joshua to look into where you might be, and we've been going around chasing down every possible lead. That's why I'm so happy to finally be able to see you again like this. What? What? <laughs> oh, I get it now. You're lying, aren't you? Really, all of that's just a cover for the fact that you're trying to capture me. What? Sorry to disappoint you, but I only know about as much as Joshua does about Ouroboros. Even if you catch me, you're not gonna get anything useful out of me. And even if I did know lots of dirty secrets, I wouldn't tell you. I bet you feel really stupid for wasting your time now. Wait a second, that's not... Or are you going to try your luck anyway? You sure brought a lot of familiar faces for backup. Even I might have trouble taking in this many people at once. But I'm confident I'll leave at least a few of you headless. Merlin, for fuck's sake, do you want to get sprayed directly in the face again? Husband, can you manage Cat? He is being obnoxious. Anyway. But I'm confident I'll leave at least a few of you headless before I end up beating him. <laughs> You've gotta be kidding me. What are we supposed to do, Shara? Ask me. This doesn't look good. Well, I think I know who you are now. Ouroboros Enforcer Number Fifteen, the Angel of Slaughter. Correct? You certainly do know me. I don't know you though. Are you a knight of the church? Yes, I'm Ree Sargent, Squire. While I may not be very familiar with your circumstances, would it hurt you to behave less like a self-centered child? Excuse me. Did you call me a self-centered child? From what I've heard, your intelligence and deductive reasoning have few peers. That led to you joining Ouroboros, obtaining both the current rank and abilities you now have. So unless I'm wrong, I find it very hard to believe you haven't already figured out that this isn't a trap we've set to capture you. And yet, you still expect us to waste our time and humor your little temper tantrum. So yes, I did call you a self-centered child. Reese is the best! Damn! <laughs> um, Reese? Damn, she sure doesn't miss its words. My, you're a brave one, aren't you, miss? Did I hear a lowly squire like you trying to provoke an enforcer like me? You must really want to end up splattered all over the floor. I could say the same to you. I have no idea why everyone else here regards you favorably, but I, for one, have no interest in being friends with someone from Ouroboros. So if a battle is what you want, I will be more than happy to oblige. Oh no. Reese! A Templar sword, huh? Those can certainly be a rude awakening in the right hands. Of course, everyone who's ever tried to challenge me with one ended up being quite predictable after a while. For a long, we were all begging you for mercy like pigs to be slaughtered. It was ever so pitiful. <laughs> I can't wait to hear you do the same. Ren! <laughs> do you actually want to fight, or do you only intend to stand around trying to sound threatening? I suppose that is enough talking. <sighs> Come on, you two! Both of you, stop it! Tita? Hey! Wait a sec. Why are the two of you so desperate to try to fight when you know you don't really want to? Ren, you're making it sound like you don't care about Estelle and Joshua, but deep down you're happy to see them again and you know it! And Reese, you've already realized that Ren's not actually a bad person. It doesn't matter that she's from Ouroboros. Well, I'm happy? Of course I'm not. Why would I possibly be- Then why did you look so happy when Estelle hugged you? Right up until the moment you realized this was all real, you were acting like it was the best dream you'd ever had. And now you're saying you don't want to talk to them? You don't want to see them? Oh, hold on a minute, Tita. And that's not true at all! That's not true at all, so just admit it! <laughs> Sweetie. I swear she just cut my life short about ten years. What the hell was she thinking? Look at you, honestly. 
thought you were a year older than me, you know? Yet here you are, crying away. You're not setting a very good example. I can't help it! What are we supposed to do when you guys finally see each other again and all you do is end up fighting? It's just too sad. <laughs> hey! What are you crying for? Why did you have to... <laughs> you know the answer to that already, Ren? But she likes you. She does? Hey, Ren. I know we've still got our differences, but how about we put all that aside and call a truce for now? A truce? I'm sure you can tell we're in the middle of a really messy situation right now. And however you got here, you've ended up being dragged right into it with us. I'd say it's all in all our best interest to work together. At least until we get out of here, anyway. What do you say? That's certainly true. There's pl still plenty we don't know about our predicament. I think someone with your intellect on our side may well help us to fill in the remaining blanks. In fact, I would greatly welcome your assistance. Yeah! I'm with the Colonel! I'm not a Colonel, Estelle. Regardless, I think it would be in your best interest to work with us, too. Cooperating will allow you to gather information more efficiently, as well as make it easier for you to ensure your own safety. That's true. It's obvious that wherever we are, it's somewhere abnormal. So it goes without saying that having me around would be a big help to all of you. Alright, out of respect for Tina's bravery, I'll spare you all this time. Fill me in on exactly what's going on here. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Ren. Just so we're clear, I haven't decided whether I'm going to work with you or not yet. All I'm promising is to listen to your explanation of what's happening. Then I'll decide if I'll help. I see. I think I've got a pretty good idea of what's going on now. Better chose this place's name couldn't have picked a better one, could they? What? We figured something out that we hadn't? Possibly. I'm not still not completely certain yet. But I'm relatively confident in my theory after hearing the Colonel's story, though. Me? Mm-hmm. My own experience was the same as everyone else's, ending up here after being surrounded by a sudden white light. But you say you weren't wearing your uniform when it happened to you, right, Colonel? How many times must I... Well, whatever. I wasn't. As I explained to everyone when I first arrived, I was wearing a shirt and slacks as I do every other day at work. Right, just checking. So then, tell me something. Would you say you have quite a strong emotional attachment to that uniform? Pardon? <laughs> oh, that's a definite yes. The symbol of your past. The past you just can't quite move on from, even though you need to. Am I right? Yes, you are. Richard. So I'm surprised you feel that way, from my perspective. And lo and behold, the moment you appeared in this world, you were wearing that very same uniform again. Whatever do you think that could mean? I would mean when I arrived here, my attachment to that past ended up being manifested as reality. In other words, this world is capable of changing based on people's thoughts. Oh. <laughs> now it makes sense. N not to me it doesn't! Can you explain in a l slightly less complicated terms to the rest of us? It's actually a really simple thing. You remember how Luciola used the gospel to make you experience a dream, right? Right? The dreams we saw were different depending on what we wanted to see, too. Of course, unlike that, this isn't a dream, but the concept is basically the same. Anyway, just like in Luciola's dream worlds, this world changes depending on what the people inside it want. It also happens to recreate places that exist in their memories, too. It all falls into place nicely once you simplify it, doesn't it? So it does. It explains the monuments we've encountered and how the doors work, too. Still, while that explanation may explain the contents of this world, I find it hard to believe that any of us would desire the predicament we found ourselves in. Oh, I don't disagree. We're not the only ones here, though, are we? Oh. So in other words, many of the contents of this world exist because of us, but its overall structure is because of someone else within it. <laughs> From what I can gather, yes. What exactly is making all of this possible is the part I'm still puzzling over. Making people's re wishes reality was the purpose of the Oriole, but now that's been lost, and I can't think of anything else capable of doing the same. I think it's easy for all of us to point the finger at who wished for this world to behave the way it does at the very least. The Lord of Phantasma. Exactly. Based on everything that's been said, they weren't in this world originally. That was just the ghost you've encountered. Until the Lord of Phantasma, she simply watched over this place from this garden here. And they showed up, stole her power, and started remaking the world according to their own whims. The result is what we're stuck in right now. Well, what do you think? Wow. Damn. Feels like you just popped your head in and solved all these crazy mysteries like they were nothing. <laughs> it's certainly impressive. Even I hadn't been able to do quite that much. Certainly, are, we really are a genius, Ren. I'm sure you could have worked this much out if you'd really put your mind to it, Joshua. 
Plus the stale stupidity is actually contagious and rubbed off on you. Well, that's not very nice. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not the case. <laughs> Dear me. Either way, it sounds like this Lord of Phantasma person likes games just as much as I do. And without me, I don't know if you'll be able to beat them, so I suppose I better lend you all a hand. <laughs> I hope you're all very grateful. Uh, yeah. Sure. It's nice to have a cutie like you on board, Ren. Well, now that that's settled, it's time to use that cube to take us back to the fifth plane so we can move on. Now that we've gotten closer to working out what's going on, we should be able to move on to the next part of the game board now. I'm guessing whatever our opponent's ready to make their next move, too. Somewhat confident. Still, have it your way. It's not as though we have any other option than to press on. I'm expecting we'll encounter a devil at the end of this plane, just like we have at all of the others. We should only move on when we're sure we can handle it. Aw, I could really do without the extra trouble. But again, I am kind of curious what these devils are like in reality. Would you like to come and have a look with me, Tita? I'm not sure just the two of us going would be such a good idea. Aw, she was so opposed to being with us earlier, but look at her now. Yeah, I'm really glad she came around. Hopefully we'll get a chance to talk to her while we're in here, too. Yeah. Alright, we're switching out Chloe for Ren for a while. As much as I hate her voice. So, okay. Um... Let's check the one I have already before we do that. Oh, he is pretty. That's not what I wanted! That's what I wanted. We should also put some stuff on him, shouldn't we? Oh, I would love not having death blows. That would be wonderful. That's why I gave her Crimson Eye. That's why we also replaced Chloe, because Chloe is also my mage. There was a logic behind this. Sometimes I have logic. God, I hate her voice.
Well, damn. All the water! To choose left or to choose right, only the cards know what the future holds. If you wish to step inside, present the card that governs fate. Uh, one second. Some doors aren't that long, but I can kind of at the end of this. I think what I'm going to do is say no for now and save and call it where we are because I have half this dungeon left to do and this door. So we will put this on hold for the time being. So, scheduling. Next week, the first will be playing more Pokemon Stadium. On the third, we will be playing more of this game. The week after that, I will not be here, so there will not be any streams. We'll be picking back up on the 15th with Paper Mario and the 17th with more of this game. Will I do anything on the other days? Maybe. We'll find out later. In the meantime, I had fun tonight. Hope everybody else did too. Thank you for stopping by, and until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and stay hydrated. Bye, everybody!